I will call the October 11, 2010 meeting of the Anchorage Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Will the secretary call the roll, please? Nancy Pease? Here. Jim Frederick? Here. Connie Yoshimura? Here. Tony Jones? Here. Arthur Isham? Here. John Weddleton? Here. Bruce Felt? And we have a quorum. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Terry Park. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just went through so many names, <laughs> and I'm not used to having many people here. I just, when you got to five, I just said, it's a quorum. <laughs> My apology. I mean, gee, Terry and Stacy. Well, we do have a quorum. And before we go on to minutes, I'm going to break rank here because I have a special announcement to make. Uh, I have a special introduction. We have a new staff person in the planning department and I'm going to allow her to come forward and introduce herself and her correct title because I will mess it up. Her name is Carol Wang and she is replacing Tyler Robinson. And so if you would come forward, Ms. Wang, and just introduce yourself to the commission. I know you need to leave right away, but I wanted them to see who you were so they could know they could feel free to contact you uh, as you're getting used to your new job. <laughs> yes, more than my new job, it's the new surroundings, and I'm going to get to experience my first winter here in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, again, my name is Carol Wong, W-I-N-G. I am the um, first day on the job today, I'm the new language planning supervisor, and I just wanted to come and say hello and introduce myself in that. I look forward to meeting each of you individually as well as just working with the commission in advancing um, the plans that you have approved of as well as the new plans that are coming down the pipeline for your review and approval. Um, would you like to learn a little bit of where I'm from and all that? Or? I think tonight we're going to give you a break. Okay. <laughs> you probably had a day of it. And thank you for stopping by this evening, Ms. Wong, and we look forward to seeing you uh, soon at a, a, a director's meeting or when you have an occasion to come out before us. So thank you. And you're welcome. And even you in capable hands will do and so sure to go well. Okay, good night. Thank you. And welcome to Anchorage and Alaska. Bye-bye. Okay, um, the minutes uh, of our August 2 and September 13, Mr. Isham. Uh, I'm sure I'm told that we don't have the August 2nd minutes. Or they both need to both. be Okay, so I move to postpone... Uh, Item B1 and B2, the minutes for August 2nd and September 13th. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weddleton. Is there any objection? Hearing none, those are postponed. Okay. And disclosures, Mr. Isham, please. Yes, Ms. Pierce, do you have anything to disclose this evening? No. Mr. Frederick. Um, yes, uh, on the reconsideration of case 2010-87, I was not here at the last meeting when that was apparently deliberated, um, and so I should not participate in the whatever happens in the reconsideration, I believe. Okay. I did not have an opportunity. Okay. I think that's so. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, have a, a motion to uh, ask... Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Frederick to participate and we'll deal with that in our official way. So moved. Is there a second? Yes. It, I'd like to speak to it. Yes, Ms. P second it. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I, I believe that the issues that would be brought up regarding the reconsideration don't require that uh, Mr. Frederick um, had been there. So I would support the motion. You, you will not support. I them. will support them. You will support that them. he do participate. Okay. Any other uh, further discussion or comments? Well, um, if I may, just do you want? Should you maybe say what 
why participation without having been there is he could make a he could participate well then I'll be getting into the next agenda item pretty much I'd have to go through that whole discussion but basically it's a public process issue it's not precisely we're not really related specifically to anything that was said during that meeting okay that's fine <laughs> or, or the prior one even any further discussion <clears throat> uh, just my comment is that uh, I will not be supporting uh, this. I feel as though uh, it's necessary to have either read the minutes or uh, the information. I have been here to participate in the reconsideration, so I will not be supporting his uh, action. Okay, we have an oh, objection, so we all need to use our machines. We don't have a majority, so it, it, uh, it fails. So it fails. He's. See, he was we were directing him to participate, and it failed. And it failed. So he doesn't have to participate. He doesn't participate. He doesn't participate, right. Mr. Frederick, you will not participate. You will not participate in that particular one. Any further uh, disclosures? Mr. Uh, Mr. Frederick? No. Okay, uh, Mr. Parks. I have the same disclosure I missed last week's meeting also. I missed last week's meeting also. So, so you did not participate and did not get an opportunity to... Uh, I did not. ...to read uh, the minutes or anything else. Okay, well, let's go through our procedures. Uh, positive motion to uh, require Mr. Parks to participate. So moved. Uh, thank you. Ms. Pins. Uh Mr. Weldon, do you use the same comments? Can I stall until Mr. Phelps sits and <laughs> get my fifth? <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think the mood of the body is clear. So um, I will not be supporting the motion. Any further comments? Okay, I will not be supporting the motion. Since there is objection, we'll need to use our machines again. Uh, a yes requires... Um, Mr. Parks to participate in no. Thank right, Mr. Uh, Parks, you are also uh, excused from participating in that particular thing. Mr. Usher, anything to uh, disclose? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair, I have the same issue. I was not uh, in attendance um, for this particular issue, and uh, I have not had a chance to read the minutes, and so therefore I ask to be excused. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a positive motion directing Ms. Yoshimura. Thank you, Mr. Weldon. Thank you, Ms. Pease. Um, and uh, I will not be supporting this motion, so therefore we're going to need a... Uh, Vote of the body on this by the machine, so please vote. A yes directs her to participate and no excuses her. Um, are you clear what we're voting on, Mr. Phelps? Probably not, no. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're... Uh, we're uh, Nancy? directing Ms. Yoshimura. I'm sorry, directing Ms. Yoshimura to participate. Oh, right, I voted yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, All right. What we're voting on, just in case any, well, let's see if anybody else uh, has an issue with this. Yes. Okay. Any stations? Did we have a quorum at that yes. last meeting? Who was there? Barely. <laughs> Barely. Um, uh, Yoshimura, anything further to disclose? Well, we're not um, on the consent agenda. Um, no, we're on, on anything. Okay, well, on that same uh, evening, you did uh, Resolution 2010-035. Okay, we'll, we'll do all those when we come to the consent agenda. Yes. <laughs> we'll just get through this Just one. get through this one. Are you strange or anything to disclose? No, I was here that night. Yeah. And Mr. Fife, anything to disclose? Uh, yes, it's on the... Um, Case G1 involving the Mental Health Trust Land Office, 
a uh, request for a conditional resource extraction. I work for the Lancet Department of Natural Resources, and uh, one of the entities I, I work with fairly extensively is what's known as the Trust Land Office that represents the Mental Health Trust Authority. Um, I have fairly extensive dealings with the Mental Health Trust Land Office, making decisions on land conveyances, monetary settlements, a variety of issues, and I'm concerned about the appearance that I would have about voting on this particular issue. Since I have other responsibilities inside the department, I'm concerned about mixing those responsibilities with this vote. Uh, do you have any direct uh, involvement in this particular case here? No, I don't. Okay. Okay, we'll need a uh, positive motion directing Mr. Phelps to participate. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Dean. Uh, Mr. Wilding, you want to speak to your motion? I, I, I won't be supporting it. I, I, I think while um, there's no direct financial interest, I think the appearance of um, an interest or a bias is enough that um, I would um, direct him uh, you know, to not participate. Any further comments? Okay, I will not be supporting this motion either, so uh, we will need to vote. Please use your machines. Okay, Mr. Phelps, you're excused from G1. Ms. Dean, any no. disclosures? No. Okay, Mr. Wilkin? None. And I have none. Painful. Okay. The next item on our agenda is uh, reconsideration of case number 2010-087, zoning conditional use for a utility substation, Chugach Electric Association, Haines Subdivision, Tract 1. I um, make a motion to reconsider our decision in that case, and that reconsideration would include that we rescind our decision on that case, that we reopen the public hearing to people who have not spoken yet, and that we give the petitioner the um, amount of time they had reserved for rebuttal at the end of the public hearing. Okay, that was seconded by Mr. Isham. Ms. Um, do you wish to speak to your motion, Mr. Weddleton? I would. The, the um, legitimacy of the whole process that we, we um, participate in requires that the public not only has a meaningful input, but they also have to trust that the system allows them for that uh, meaningful input. And if we make a mistake, we should err on the side of allowing public testimony. In this case, the standard procedure was followed, but it led to confusion by the public. And it was shown by the fact that at the first meeting, we had one person testify. But when we deliberated, there were at least half a dozen people who were here expecting to testify. And what they had found is the, the sign placed on the, um, the, the site said public hearing and had the case number. And if you went to the website and keyed in that case number, it said public hearing for September 13th. So they came here for that public hearing. There was no indication that the public hearing was closed and that we were only going to deliberate. So, and it's, they felt disenfranchised. They, they weren't able to speak their case, you know, speak their mind and present their facts on this case. So I feel that um, to have a truly open public process, we need to reopen the public hearing. But the issue before us tonight is just whether or not to reconsider. There would, but I, can I add those other little pieces regarding um, the we, and essentially that means we would revote. Is that correct? Uh, but That's fundamental. we wouldn't do that tonight. We, we would, would not do that would, tonight, right. We would only decide that at a future time right. we're going to reconsider the matter. Correct. And Jerry, can I ask a yes. question to staff? Yes, you may. Okay. I, I don't know if anybody on staff can answer this question, but can, you ver can it be verified that the uh, date was incorrect on this public notice? Um, through the chair, uh, Mr. Isham, uh, the 
uh, the signs that are posted on the site notifying that there's a you know, public hearing um, do not have a date on them. So, well, was it on the website that it was incorrect? Um, I think the website uh, doesn't say whether or not there's a public hearing. It just, um, there's really not a place. It shows that there's a meeting on it, but I, don't, I, I think that the public thinks that it says it. it there was a, um, supposed to be a public hearing. That may have led to some of the confusion. I believe it said public hearing. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, it said public so. hearing said, for this case, Gave the day of our meeting, September 13th, and it said public hearing. Right. We, because it, it probably would have said that because it, there's only sort of a drop-down choices to put right now because of the way the, system, the computer system is. And I think the choices were non-public hearing, public hearing, but there wasn't a choice for continuation of a hearing, but the public hearings closed. So it, it probably led to confusion in the public. And it would be a shame to have a restriction on computer programming. Yeah cause problems with the uh, public's participation. Okay. Can I ask a question, Stan? Yes. Um, the notices that were sent out to the affected property owners, I presume it's 500 feet radius, 500 foot radius. Did those have the correct date? Um, yes, they did. They listed the first public hearing, um, the continuation to the next um, uh, meeting um, that you know the commission closed the public hearing, continued to the next uh, meeting, and said, uh, um, you know, bring additional information. CEA bring additional information, and that all happened. Um, and then that's when uh, you know so more so people showed up. It's fairly typical for us for noticing a case on, let's say, the first week of the uh, of the month, and the public will attend that public meeting, and then there are instances where there's a continuation of the public hearing. And the, I guess the issue I'm trying to get to is that first noticing, where was the error in that noticing? Oh, there was no um, error. Um, I think that uh, the only thing that the department could have done better was, you know, change the computer system to have something different yeah. than the, um, and like spread, spread information to the community council and, and wherever we could to the public that, that the this, this second meeting was not a public hearing. We, we but, didn't but do a good enough job of that. But my understanding is that we, we don't go to great lights to notice that continuation public hearing. We simply carry it on the agenda. And we presume that the public hearing that was noticed at the initial date would be the principal public hearing. That's correct. And so the noticing that went out was for that principal public hearing and was correctly noticed. That's correct. Okay. Okay, um, Ms. Dean. Uh, through the chair, my question to staff is, is there anything different that uh, could have been done in order to make the public happy other than, I mean, is there anything, any procedural changes that need to be made in order to um, have met the public's needs or is this something that happens regularly in many cases? Um, uh, through the chair, Ms. Dean, this sort of thing has happened uh, before, um, and I think that systematically the department's trying to look at a way to, you know, better explain that if this, you know, when there's a continuation to a new new date, that that explaining that, you know, you won't have an opportunity to testify. Um, the current way of doing things, we just didn't. Um, there's not really a good process for that. Well, I have to say that. This has been done this way for the last 25, 30 years. There's no difference in what we did this time than all previous times. And if there was a problem with this case, there was a problem with all previous cases. So, granted that, that all those things, um, I, I, I don't see that this case is any special or any different than any other case that people have contested they haven't seen the sign or they haven't known about it or whatever it may be. I, I, I'm not sure that this case is so different than any of the others. Uh, through the chair, uh, Ms. Dean, I do believe that this has happened um, uh, where there's been a continuation from a platting case with the platting board. Um, this sort of situation has occurred at least once to my recollection with the, with the platting board. and. Um, I can't speak to um, your your um, your question, but um, just a point. But my recollection is is that it occurs consistently both in the planning board and the planning commission has for years and years. Miss Pease, 
I just wanted to clarify my understanding that in this case, it wasn't that somebody didn't see something, didn't see a sign. It was that people went to the official website and saw public hearing. And so it wasn't negligence on their part. It was misinformation on the municipal website. And I think that responsibility is ours to fix. Well, let me ask that. What's the misinformation? Um, uh, I think that uh, planning department would view it just a little bit slightly different from uh, Ms. P's characterization. I think the, the notice that was on the website uh, was probably just the original notice for the original hearing. Madam Yes. Um, um, Sorry. Okay. Um, Mr. Isham, and then I've got Mr. Weddleton back in the queue. Uh, the question I have for staff is, is there a requirement that you are aware of that requires you to post the information where the, the meeting is, the next meeting is going to deal with a, something that's already been uh, closed and then a decision will just be made at the following meeting. Is there a requirement that you're aware of administratively? Um, through the Chair, Mr. Eichen, no, there isn't a requirement because the, the two hearings were within 30 days of one another, so there's no requirement for re-notification or anything like that. What the Planning Department could do is um, uh, send uh, letters out to all the same property owners that they originally um, uh, uh, notify the original hearing and just send out a new letter say, explaining this. Um, and we didn't do that because it's not required and, um, you know, maybe it was missed. Okay, Mr. Weddleton. Well, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, I hope that I'm not making the case that the planning department did anything wrong or different. I mean, it seemed like it was pretty standard. But what we had this time was a problem because we did have half a dozen or so people come to testify. And, re they, you know, they, some of them were regular community council people, reasonable people, um, looking at a sign, going to the website, and the website said public hearing. So they came with the expectation that there would be a public hearing. And, uh, you know, I think we show that the process is um, tr truly accepting the public input by opening this back up to allow them the chance that they believe they were promised, you know, to um, address the case. Anything further by anyone? Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to say a couple of words uh, since I'm not going to be voting in favor of reconsideration. Um, and I've been torn about this ever since Mr. Weddleton spread notice of reconsideration because I feel very strongly about the public process. But as Mr. Phelps said, this has been the standard way of, uh, of doing postponements and, ha and conducting business for at least 25 years that I, I know of. And it's not out of the ordinary and it's not incorrect. There were legal notices that were sent out prior to the first public hearing. There was the official notice that the municipality gave. Our agenda was, was uh, available for the first hearing. And then during that first meeting, when we took uh, the action we, that we took was to postpone it, there should have been no expectation by the public beyond that night that anything was going to continue beyond that night. And if people had been at this meeting, they would have heard that the public hearing was closed. There should have been no confusion that the public hearing was closed. And that the, net, the date that the meeting was postponed to was for action only by the Planning Commission. So as harsh as that sounds, that, that's the facts. And um, and it was on the record. And so it, it's a matter of having to stay 
tuned in and informed all the time. And that's either by going to each and every meeting or getting on the phone and verifying things with the staff. And I have to do it myself when there are things that I'm interested in before boards and commissions or the assembly because uh, to, to make sure I have complete information. Anyway, I see you're back in the queue. You have something else to add, Ms. Pease? Yeah, just briefly, as far as the public's expectation um, of what would be happening at the next meeting, we do ask for additional information, additional visuals. We would say that that wasn't adequate information in the, pa in the packet. So, but that doesn't constitute a public hearing. Okay, I sense we're ready to vote. Um, I'm not going to support the motion either. Um, pretty much for the reasons that the chairman described. Um, I would like to clarify that um, the planning department staff was, I think, trying to make the assertion that um, there might have been some irregularities on their part, and I don't believe that was the case at all. Um, they, I think, characterized it as, well, we could have done it differently. I would say that um, you don't want to construct a whole new process for which there could be procedural errors unless you think it through very carefully. And at this point in time, they have done nothing wrong. There's been no inadequacy of the public's noticing. And if the plan department wishes to go back and reevaluate with the process, that's fine. But we don't want to start it necessarily without really thinking it through carefully what it means in terms of staff resources and procedural aspects. So for a variety of reasons, but mostly as the chairman was indicating, I will not be supporting this motion. Mr. Isham. I will not be supporting this motion. Uh, back in the days when I was a community activist, I used to have to follow this stuff because things like this would happen. And when one person found out that something, the public hearing had closed and the decision was to be made, we'd get on our telephone tree and let everybody know what had happened. So uh, I don't think anybody's been, you know, the initial notice was accurate and there was some testimony at that public hearing and, you know, that's the way it is. Okay. Anything further? The motion is to reconsider. Uh, you can clarify, but the motion is to reconsider, not yes, but you can clarify with Mr. Weddleton. I just wanted to make sure you did understand that the motion was reconsidering and that what you had read about rescinding and reopening the public hearing, you basically weren't putting that in your motion. Oh, that, that can't go in there. Just make okay, sure. we'll keep it clean. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything further? Okay. Okay, hearing no for, okay, it's time to vote whether to reconsider. Uh, that motion, that motion fails. Well, thank you for your indulgence, folks. Well, you're, you offered a persuasive argument. Um, the me next batter on our agenda as our consent agenda. I'm sure you get everybody back in. Yes. <laughs> um, did the first scene background come back? Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I make a comment to staff on this? Yes. If the staff feels there was some inadequacy here, um, please do evaluate the process um, and make the commission aware of uh, any inadequacy. But when you're going through that evaluation process, be very careful to carefully analyze the advantages and disadvantages to that. Thank you. We have one more coming. This is my problem. It was all my fault. Mm. 
Madam Chair. Yes. Um, move for approval of the consent agenda. Items D1 and A through F and 5A. Okay, is there, and thank you, Mr. Weddleton, for your second. Does anyone wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. D1, B, and C. Okay. And which one was it that you uh, were excused from, Ms. Yoshimura? D1E. I was not at that meeting. Okay. And you weren't either? My, myself also, E and F. Yeah. And I would have the same issue. Okay. Gee, that means is there, are there any objections to? Well, I'd like to. I'm sorry. I'd like to pull the uh, D1E. If I could. D. D1E. Well, it, everybody is wanting to pull that one. Oh, it's all it's pulled because they're off. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, anybody else have anything else to pull? Oh, wow. Okay. Is there any objection to D1A or D1D? And F and 5A. I just meant, well, F has been pulled. No. Yes. Yeah, we pulled. D1, B. B, C, and E have been pulled. B, C, and E and F. Who, who pulled F? I thought these three oh, down here. They just can't vote on it. Oh, so. you were just abstaining from it. Oh, e, Mr. Weddleton pulled E. Uh, e. Right. Okay. Well, I, I just offhand now, um, Commissioner Pease, did, or did you pull D? No. No. Just B and C. Well, I mean, I'll pull D just for a brief discussion. Sorry. I wonder why we have these on the consent agenda. D and D. I think we're going to start putting our, these on the regular agenda. <laughs> it would take less time. Okay, so, so it's 1A and F and 5A. Okay. Is there any objection to 1A, 1F, and 5A? Hearing none, those are approved. Ms. Pease. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, 32nd Avenue, which we looked at the design for, um, I had uh, two questions on there, and I didn't have the benefit of having the no, um, minutes right with me. Um, Condition number 13, which is on page 2, um, just <laughs> I was just curious whether we really proposed that the traffic calming should be designed to decrease speed to 25 miles an hour, but it should be posted at 30 miles an hour for a couple of reasons. We don't usually recommend posted speed limits, but that just seemed like <laughs> designing for <laughs> disaster. Um, the other question on this one, this is the road that goes past a school district parcel where Parks and Rec wants to build a soccer field. And I think we might have had a reference to the soccer field slip into the other road resolution. If you look at the next one, which is Pioneer Drive, um, B3 says parking for a soccer field should not be part of the roadway cost unless it is in the long-term best use of the land and should not be for residential parking on public land. So um, this is also an issue at the Chugach Fiddles Park, but the soccer field in particular, I think, was over there next to the Totem Theater on 32nd. Okay. 
And I think there's supposed to be that sort of effort on the soccer field in this particular resolution. So why don't we have staff check the minutes and come back? Well, I can speak to the the one point. On but the, your microphone isn't on. I'm, well, my, it's on. Is it? Okay. Talking too quiet. Um, we did have that discussion, and the issue there was that it referred to uh, the the report referred vaguely to traffic calming and left it wide open on to what speed. So there was some discussion about that, and what was agreed to is that it, it sets a goal for the traffic calming that it would set a kind of a goal of 25 miles an hour that would be posted at 30. <laughs> They sound garbled, but well, okay. uh, otherwise it would be the traffic, traffic calming, you can calm a highway, I suppose, you know, so that people go 55 instead of 70, and it just said traffic calming. And I wanted to put some parameter that a goal would be to get that speed down rather than have it at collector speeds, which could be quite high. And it must have, I mean, I have a memory of the discussion, and it must have worked on both of these because we have the same wording. <laughs> I remember the discussion, too. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't mean to add confusion to the issue. Um, I know you talked to Sharon. And right. Sharon and I talked as well. What's in the resolution for the motion and the findings were, exa were exact with regard to the traffic calming, but the interpretation was slightly different for the concept of the speed limit. Is, am I correct? This says what I meant, not what I said. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. so what we okay. need to do is make sure on the record that he indicates that that's correct so we can footnote the resolution that the minute <clears throat> your intent was different than your This intent. meets my intent, and it right. just puts it in more precise technical language. Exactly. And we just need it on the record. Okay. Well, then with regard to um, condition 13 on page 2, I don't propose anything, but um, if the time isn't of the essence, if staff could check on the references that ought to be in there, I think, to the paying for a soccer field parking lot as part of the roadway cost, if we could have that checked and brought back to us at the next meeting, I'd propose to do that, motion to do that. Okay, so that's a motion, Ms. Pease? Yes. <laughs> okay, and there's a second by Mr. Isham. Is there any objection? Hearing? Okay, Ms. Pease has moved to postpone D1B. Mr. Isham seconded. it. Is there any uh, objection? Hearing none, this will come back to us after we check, staff checks on that, about the cost for building or paving the parking lot for the soccer field. Okay. Now we move on to B D1C, Ms. Pease. Yes, this is the Pioneer Drive, and I would also request, again, since I don't think Tom is critical on this, that staff check B13, which refers to parking for the soccer field and not using, not encouraging parking of residential, residential parking on public land. I think maybe half of that applies, but we'd just like staff to look at the minutes and bring it back to us. Okay, so you're making a motion again? Yes, I move that staff check. B13 against the minutes and clarify it if necessary and bring it back to us. Okay, and that was seconded by Mr. Frederick. Is there any objection? Hearing none, that's postponed and will come back to us. Okay, Mr. Weddleton, D1D. Well, I, I, I just very briefly on that is my understanding is the yeah, I got deja vu looking at this. We had postponed this from the previous meeting, waiting till we got the minutes to see if. Um, the findings and so on were correct, and we got abbreviated minutes today, so I didn't review them. But I, I seemed okay to me at the previous meeting, and I believe it was uh, Commissioner Pease who wanted to double check. So, did you get a chance to do that, or? Um, no, I didn't. Well, we might want to postpone these again since we postponed the minutes. 
Uh, I'd move to put, am I making a motion here? I'd move to postpone these until we can review the minutes. Okay. And that was seconded by Ms. Pease. Is there, Ms. Dean? Uh, Madam Chair, does this delay um, the project for yet another month? That they will not be able to get a permit to do this project? By us not... Mr. McLaughlin. Um, when a res uh, through the chair, Ms. Dean, um, the resolution which... Um, Approval of the resolution um, is an important step in moving forward in the permitting process. Um, uh, when the, the resolution is postponed at these meetings, then it, it, it adds time uh, to the approval of things. I'm not familiar with this case, but I think we're discussing a rezoning. So if there was approval for this rezoning, a recommendation for approval of this rezoning case, um, uh, this uh, case will not be sent to the assembly uh, clerk um, to be set on the agenda for the assembly uh, until after. It's a conditional use, Mr. Oh. McLaughlin. Okay, so then in that case, you guys are the, the final um, um, deciding uh, uh, authority. And um, uh, there are permits that they can begin, um, they can begin without uh, final approval of the resolution. Uh, so, uh, they can apply for building permits. Um, um, some or all may not be actually issued until the resolution is signed. And our next, yeah, our next meeting is only two weeks away. Yes, our next meeting is only two weeks away. That's correct. Okay. All right. Ms. Pease, the other possibility, since we have the minutes before us, is that during our break we could take a look at them. I think I could do that if we want. Hey, I, I would. Did I move it? I would draw the motion and um, just um, move to rearrange the agenda so this would be put off until after we could review the minutes this evening. We have we have uh, summary minutes. Yes, sir. All right. Well, then make a motion to put it at the end of the agenda. Uh, move to rearrange the agenda to put uh, consideration of resolution 2010-32 to the end of the agenda. And that was seconded by Mr. Eicherman. It looks like there's no objection, according to the secretary. Okay. Moving on to a D1E, Mr. Weddleton. I'm sorry to have this drag on. It's actually a fairly, um, <clears throat> couple fairly small changes that um, on page the page two A three the second to last line. It, it, maybe it says what's in the minutes, but it said the use of PLI on lot one has worked well since 1981, and should continue to work well for lot 32. But uh, that implies that lot 32 has been PLI and it hasn't been. So I would move to delete the word continue. Or uh, remove the words continue to. Okay, you want to put that in the form of a motion? Okay, I have one other change too, but um, okay. I would move to um, on page two, section A3, second to last line change the wording so it reads, lot one has worked well since 1981 and should, I'm sorry, yeah, and should work well for lot 32. And the second would be on um, uh, finding number five is to actually split that so that Five ends at the phrase demand for residential is there on line four, and that the what follows that becomes finding six, and then that the findings are renumbered from there. Then, can you put please put that in the form of a motion? Just move, move to 
um, restructure finding five so that it becomes two findings so that um, <clears throat> finding number six is the original horse facility on lot one was rezoned to PLI in 1981 to legitimize commercial horse boarding and riding. This rezoning of lot 32 is essentially the same process as was done in 1981. And from that point, renumber the rest of the findings. Okay. So your motion continues yep. what was earlier, the earlier change in number three, and then splitting number five. So we have a five and a six, and then renumbering the rest of the uh, numbers. Correct. Okay. And that was seconded by Mr. Isham. Is there any objection to those changes? Hearing none, that is changed. Moving up on to uh, F. Oh, that's been approved. All right, now we are at other. F5 other. And we're going to need two motions here. Uh, F5A is case number 2010-122, review and recommendation of the general government 2011 proposed capital improvement budget and the 2011-2016 proposed capital improvement program. And um, we already did it as part of the consent agenda. Um, Mr. Tremont, just a few brief words, please. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission is being asked to review and provide recommendations uh, to the Anchorage Assembly regarding the 2011 capital improvement budget and the 2011 through 2016 capital improvement program. Um, these documents have been prepared by the Office of Management and Budget. And as the review period was extremely uh, short this year, the, the planning division has only provided several uh, comments for consideration. The first being that the review process of the CIP uh, should begin earlier in the year to enable a more thorough review. And secondly, that projects new to the CIP for any given year uh, could be highlighted, would be helpful in the review. And that concludes the staff report. Okay. Thank you. This is not a public hearing item. We did have a work session on this earlier this evening. This is the time for the commission to um, formally offer comments uh, with regard to the um, capital improvement budget and the CIP to the administration and, and else it will go forward to the assembly. It needs to be in the form of a motion. And um, I will stand down. Anything that we mentioned during the work session was not recorded and not of record. So you're going to re need to restate uh, your comments. And uh, again, Ms. Uh, Ms. Yoshimura. to the six-year fiscal plan. We're going to deal with that second. Okay. That's a second agenda item. This We're talking right now about the capital improvement budget and the capital improvement program. Madam Chair, yes. uh, I move for approval and forwarding of the uh, capital improvement budget and the capital improvement program. And that was seconded by Ms. Dean. I'll take friendly amendments. <laughs> and you'll take friendly amendments or comments. Uh, Ms. Pease. I have a couple of comments, and that would be that um, that staff, in choosing and in looking at uh, the austerity budgets of the future, um, weigh the public infrastructure investments to ensure that priorities are put on infrastructure in the intended infill and redevelopment areas, particularly our major employment centers and our neighborhood commercial centers, um, as that's what's called for in the comp plan. Those are the, the sort of the priority areas for development. 
And if we can't build everything on our wish list, um, we give our, our comp plan the biggest boost by um, building efficiently and, and supporting those centers. And then I also had this specific comment, which um, um, the staff was going to uh, look at with regard to the um, priority for access from the south end of Golden View. There have been two access projects proposed in the past, one privately funded, and that one doesn't appear to have made any progress, and so uh, there's a different one in, in, in this uh, CIP, and I'm wondering whether the, the well, they're going to check on which, which is the most effective um, next connection for that area. Okay. Any further uh, comments? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Yoshimura. I do have to make one comment on the record because um, I don't necessarily agree with um, Commissioner Pease regarding um, funding in the areas where we have the town centers um, because it does not support, these neighborhood centers do not support housing because of the cost of the land that are associated in these communities that are usually in excess of 20 to $22 a square foot, it does not support housing. And so um, as an advocate for affordable and workforce housing, um, I feel that um, although in theory that's a good idea, it doesn't um, create the necessary sense of community for a residential development that I would like to see. Okay. Any further comments on the uh, proposed capital improvement budget or capital improvement program for 2011? Hearing and seeing none, is there any objection to the motion? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, we'll send a uh, positive recommendation forward. The next uh, matter behind, uh, before us under is 5B, case number 2010-124, review and recommendations of the six-year physical plan. Um, Mr. Tremont, uh, I don't see your initials, but I'm going to task you with your brief introduction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission is being asked to review the six-year fiscal program and forward a recommendation to the Anchorage Assembly. Um, the document that in the packet was prepared by the municipality's chief financial officer. And that would conclude the staff report. Okay. Thank you. A motion would be in order. Mr. Isham. Madam Chair, uh, move uh, to forward uh, the uh, six-year fiscal program 2011-2016 to, uh, to the Anchorage Assembly uh, with any recommendations that uh, we may wish to attach. Okay. Uh, and that was seconded by Ms. Pease. Ms. Yoshimura. I have several friendly amendments that I would like to offer. Okay. The first being on page 2 of 24 under a safe place to call home. Um, on the third line, comma, solutions for our homeless population, I would like to add, and affordable, comma, workforce housing. Okay. Uh, what page was that again? Page Mr. 2 of 24. Okay. Item, um, under item number six, promote economic development, I would like to add item number I and, um, I'm sorry, under 6C, support the University of Alaska, Anchorage's, and the Anchorage School District's workforce development program, and I'd like to add and encourage affordable and workforce housing, period. Those are my uh, 
requested amendments for um, that particular um, housing. I do have other amendments as well, but perhaps we should take them by topic. Okay, I, <coughs> I have no objection to those. Ms. Pease, do you have any objection? No. Okay. Thank you. Did you get both of those, Madam Secretary? And then I have another friendly amendment under item number four, add D, coordinate transportation improvements and extensions with AWW, AWWU water and sewer extensions. Uh, three of 24. And it's right here. Coordinate. Add, a, add D under four. This is AWWU and who else? Transportation. Uh, a coordinate transportation improvements and extensions with AWWU water and sewer extensions. Okay. Okay, is there any objection to that, Mr. I yeah, just a comment. It would also be appropriate to uh, include the power companies, I don't know. I mean, we're talking, you know, if, if, if you know, water and sewer and gas and um, electricity, or does that already happen? I don't know. We don't have any jurisdiction okay. over those okay. except for uh, the ones that are municipal utilities. Okay. Okay. Ms. Pease? Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Okay. I have a couple of... Um, I no, no, do you yes. have any... Yes. Do you concur? I concur. Okay. Um, I have a third one. Okay. Under 6G. Um, okay. Streamline our permitting and plan process to be more attractive to business and establish time limits for plans and warranty approvals. I have no objection. Ms. Pease? Concur. Okay. Um, and... My last one is item number seven under B, achieve an organizational culture that puts a high value on community service and accountability. No objection. Ms. Keys? No objection. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Mr. Weddleton. <coughs> so are we, are these just general <coughs> comments, or are we actually doing like amendments? We're doing, we are doing we'll amendments, amendments or comments. You can do either. I'll call them comments. Okay. That'll work. Uh, well, one comment is in the future, what I'd like to see um, would be the expected spending compared with the estimates for the LABA uh, tax cap for each particular year. And I'd like to highlight the points that a number of reasons for budget shortfalls were noted. One was that there was a, um, a, a bond payment holiday last year. Their retirement fund payments are being made uh, up $8.5 million. That the cost of self-insurance have increased dramatically. And that investment fund earnings have decreased. And also note that the revenue stream in the no action scenario was not consistent with assumption in the action plan scenario. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Dean. Madam Chair, I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but I would like to disagree with one of Connie's um, additions or changes to the um, six-year plan. Is this the plan yeah. to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I disagree with adding, uh, making AWW and uh, sewer connections to um, uh, the transportation systems. Uh, I think this isn't the place to do something like that that is so far reaching and costing to the city. I don't think this is the place okay. for it. Um, after we've gotten, uh, you can, uh, if you desire, make a motion to eliminate that since it was accepted as a friendly amendment. Okay, so I would make an amendment to... You would make an amendment to the motion that's on the floor to eliminate okay, that, thank you. that one provision. Okay. 
she's, she can do it now or she can do it up in, until any time before we vote. Okay. Okay. I, can I do that now? Yes, you may. All right. Um, and I would like to make a, a friendly amendment to delete. It will be friendly. It's not friendly. It's, an, it's a. It's a regular amendment. A regular so you have amendment. to make a motion to amend. Okay. Uh, motion to amend that uh, the AWW and the sewer requirements from the transportation be removed due to the costs. And that was seconded by Mr. Weddleton. Okay. Can anyone else have anything to say, to speak to that, Mr. Weddleton? Well, I, I would, and actually I won't be supporting the motion because it, it really is just setting a goal. It's not setting policy. I mean, it would take, before that would happen as a strict requirement, and I believe there are some requirements connected with that, but before it were strictly done, there would be <clears throat> code changes and quite a bit of routine changes. But it, it is, I think, generally expected that you don't build a road, then tear it up, and then put a pipe under it, um, Elmore, this summer, um, <laughs> and many other cases. So so I, I would support it. It seems reasonable, and it's worthwhile to have in as a goal. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I won't support the motion. I do support the current wording. Okay. Any further comments? Um, I don't see anyone else in the queue. Um, are you trying to get in the queue? Okay. Okay. Let's vote. The motion is to delete D under four. That's correct. <clears throat> and that motion fails. So that provision stays in. All right. Any other comments? from commissioners. Ms. Pease? Yes, Madam Chair, I had a couple of specific changes to um, propose. One is on page three under 4C, rather than maintain a viable transit system, I would propose to um, have a goal of maintaining a robust transit system that serves as an affordable and reasonably convenient mode of transportation, particularly for access to employment centers. And shall I keep continuing? Let's take them one at a time. Okay. <laughs> To maintain a robust transit system that serves as an affordable and reasonably convenient mode of transportation, particularly for access to employment centers. I accept that. And who? I'm seconding it. Okay. <laughs> you with your original second. Taxing my brain here tonight. Okay. Uh, is there any objection? No, you may, well, you accepted it. So I accept it's okay. It, right. I need a snack. Anyway, I don't have an objection because I don't think it really matters all that much, but um, frankly, I think that we're doing well if we have a viable system as opposed to even a robust system. It's um, very difficult to maintain the existing system. I use the bus a lot, as a matter of fact. And it's a great way of getting to and from work for me, but it's not for a lot of other people. And uh, there's some real uh, difficulties in the financing of the system right now that uh, have to be resolved. So I, I would settle for a viable system, but I'm not going to, you know, oppose the motion. Okay. All right. Your next proposed change, Ms. Pease. Also on page six. Under Section 6, Promote Economic Development, I would propose to add a new item, which is to set priorities for publicly funded infrastructure in order to support info and redevelopment of major employment centers and community centers in accordance with the Comprehensive Plan's intended pattern of growth. Once more. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Set priorities for publicly funded infrastructure in order to support infill and redevelopment 
of major employment centers and community centers in accordance with the comprehensive plan's intended pattern of growth. I have no objection. Okay. Anything further? Yes. Um, three more points. Um, this item, I don't have a page number for it, but um, actually on page two, that fourth visionary point, which is includes um, infrastructure to support health care and cultural and recreational activities. And I'd like the those concepts to be incorporated into the goals section. And where, uh, where, where is it where again? On page two, there are those little diamond-shaped oh. bullets, little four-point bullets. And it talks about an inviting place to live, work, and play. And part of that is supporting health care and cultural and recreational activities. And that doesn't appear under any of the goals at this strategic goal level. So I'm asking that that be incorporated into the goals. Um, for example, supporting libraries as an economic development and cultural stimulus center for the community. Okay, so you're basically saying we've got these vision and we haven't written it down anywhere in the goals. Right. Okay. Well, I don't look on that as something that, uh, that's just a comment, I think, rather than something that I would have to approve as a... Well, I don't have specific wording, but I'm yeah. asking for consideration of additional wording. Okay, so I have no objection to that for additional wording. Okay. And uh, I guess I just have one more, and this is just a one-word change. On page 3, item 7, it says improve community relations and sustain a positive public opinion. And I would just put in place of the word sustain, earn a positive public opinion. And my reasoning there is um, we don't have to have, you know, glossy brochures sent out about the good job, but to have the good job done. I have no objection to that. Okay, Ms. Yoshimura. Um, I do object to one of Ms. Pease's suggestions regarding um, public infrastructure be um, promoted or um, prioritized to in, um, neighborhood and core development, re, re, infill and redevelopment areas um, because it doesn't make housing affordable, as per my previous comments. And if that becomes one of the goals of the city, and that's the only place for a publicly funded and supported infrastructure, we might as well send all of our workforce housing to the valley. And then after the workforce goes to the valley, then so will our businesses, as has already begun. And we need to make a motion to eliminate that because that was included as a friendly amendment. So I make a motion to eliminate that. And it's 6I. 6I. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Madam Chair? Is there, I need a second. If it wasn't second. Thank you, Mr. Frederick. Okay, Ms. Pease. Yes, I, I just I just wanted to say that I, I um, respectfully don't share that concern because the major employment centers are fairly large areas, and um, 
Likewise, the, the community centers have a, a fairly good-sized radius. And I think the idea is that if you um, stimulate economic activity in those areas and you have, say, transit, um, that will help to lift our, whole, our overall economy um, and keep jobs in Anchorage. If, if we were talking about, you know, roads that or parking garage that just supported a, a several block area, you probably wouldn't be supporting housing. But if you're talking about an area that's a mile or so across, such as the UMED district, I would think that stimulation of that larger economic zone would, would help to bring about housing. Basically what happens is when you um, go in and spend money for public infrastructure, the cost of the land in the surrounding area becomes prohibitively um, expensive and is converted to extremely high density or mixed use and therefore becomes either undesirable as far as a living is concerned um, for entry level and affordable and workforce housing or becomes prohibitively expensive. So um, I think we spend a lot of money on public infrastructure and improvements. Um, for example, the improvements along the Park Strip in Ninth Avenue and um, all of that downtown area is prohibitively expensive um, as far as redevelopment is concerned, which is a good example. Okay. Mr. Weddleton? This, maybe this discussion will get too long, but I, I would not support this motion. And some examples that I look at is the town center, the Abbott Loop Town Center. And we've approved uh, development that Lumen Designs was doing off next to the uh, church on Lake Otis that I believe had a substantial affordable housing component. And they're actively working on that. There's a Greens project at the corner of O'Malley and Lake Otis. There was also a substantial number of homes that they have. Um, they're doing some work there now. I don't, but, but the intent there was it would be affordable. And those site condos on Brayton back up to that town center. And I don't know if a quarter million dollar condos are affordable or not, but, but we do see residential development around the perimeters of these town centers. And, and that's as planned by the comprehensive plan that, that we would develop that way. Okay. La we're going to have some last comments here, Ms. Shamira, and then Ms. Pease, and then we're done. Well, what I would say to you is at the corner of O'Malley and um, that area, the Greens property, that road that's being put in is being funded by the municipality of Anchorage. It is the secondary egress to Independence Park. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't consider $300,000 and greater condominiums that's going to be on the Lake Otis Looming site as affordable in workforce housing. I think that project is designed for downsizers on the hillside, and those aren't considered affordable in workforce. Those are, will be considered luxury, luxury units. So I think we're talking about two different housing types. Ms. Pease? Yes. Um, with regard to Ninth Avenue, which Ms. Yoshimura, these are two examples, Ninth Avenue, um, once it becomes a pedestrian-friendly corridor straight to the, along the edge of downtown, <clears throat> I think that helps Fairview. Um, I think it helps the kind of um, development uh, have walking access, which, which is, is what people of the Fairview area can, can benefit from. Um, likewise, in, say, Spinard, by Improving um, access along Spinard Road has been, as has been improved, uh, has been proposed several times. There are numerous lower income, lower value neighborhoods there that will benefit from walking access or um, transit friendly roads where the bus can actually stop and they can ride it to the surrounding neighborhoods. So I think um, those are two examples where Investment in the infrastructure in those centers radiates out and provides access into them from surrounding lower-income neighborhoods. Okay. Well, um, is there objection? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. So there, we need to vote. This is... And that motion uh, fails. So, 
I think there's confusion in terms of what the vote, what we're voting. We're voting for six, to delete six I. Okay. Yeah, we need to revote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You stop, what? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're voting to delete Ms. P's motion for 6I. It's my understanding. I, I, I've, accept, I've accepted 6I as a friendly amendment. You're now making a motion just to delete yes. the whole thing. Right. Yes. Okay, that motion fails. Okay. Now we have the main motion back before us. Does anyone wish to add any, um, any additional comments? I think we're all, is everyone commented out? Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I will be supporting my original motion because I think we've massaged it and everybody's had their say and we've put things in that are appropriate and <coughs> taken things out that are not appropriate. And so uh, I think it's, it's ready to go forward to the assembly at this particular time with our recommendations. Okay. Anything further on my right? No. Okay, so is there any objection to sending this forward? Hearing none, this will go forward to the assembly with the comments and suggested changes from the Planning Commission. Thank you for sticking with us this evening. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate your attendance this evening, Ms. Mahoney. Um, okay. Now, we're going to a short break. Yes. We're going to take a very short break and come back and do, conduct our public hearing. This will also give those of you that want to read that, um, met those minutes, a chance to do so. I'd invite those of you in the audience uh, to get up and stretch your legs, walk around for a few minutes. Sorry. that out after the meeting. We're going to resume right now. I'll call the meeting back to order. And the next case before us is case number 2010-110. Uh, the petitioner is Alaska Mental Health Trust Land Office. And the request is for a zoning conditional use for a natural resource extraction. And uh, this is a public hearing item. Could we have the staff presentation, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, sitting to the right of me is uh, uh, Julie Makala. She's the project administrator for the 40th Avenue um, uh, Road Construction Project. And uh, she's here representing Project Management Engineering Department. Um, any questions related to, you know, she's just a useful resource here. 
Um, also, uh, late comments were received and laid on the table uh, for everyone. Uh, these, uh, uh, one, one of the, the comments from uh, Janine Nessheim and the Department of Health and Human Services of the municipality, these came in about a week ago. And uh, after these comments uh, came, uh, arrived in the planning department, I, uh, uh, the staff checked with, uh, with DHHS to, and sh to see if, if the conditions of approval recommended by the planning department um, in your packet um, satisfied their needs, and uh, she said they did. Um, uh, next, um, on the, uh, these late, uh, late, uh, late received uh, comments, there's a letter from uh, Robert McClung, the uh, president of the University Area Community Council, uh, recommending uh, approval of the uh, conditional use permit for this uh, natural resource extraction project. Um, within your packets, um, pages uh, 50 and onward, there's some uh, useful uh, maps. Uh, page 50 is the existing topography. Um, page 51 is the, the proposed grading plan. Uh, page 52 is a section um, uh, uh, drawing uh, showing the grading plan. Uh, there's, um, another, there's a drainage plan on page 53, a landscape plan on page 54, and then there's a, a useful um, uh, aerial uh, photo showing the um, uh, hall route on page 55. The Alaska Mental Health Trust Land Office is requesting approval of a natural resource extraction uh, for uh, Providence Chester Creek subdivision track C2. The property contains uh, approximately 5.5 um, acres and is zoned PLI. The property is steeply sloped. The owner intends to remove the hill and regrade the site um, in order to prepare the site for a new development. The future of the property is not, has not yet been determined. Uh, new material extracted from the site will be sold commercially. Uh, the, the department finds that all the standards of uh, approval, uh, both uh, general standards of conditional use permit approval and for natural resource ex extraction, have been met. Um, I'll just sort of go through some of the highlights. Uh, the property zone PLI, the UMED uh, district plan identifies this parcel as uh, development priority. The Anchorage 2020 plan, comprehensive plan, shows the parcel as a major employment center and a redevelopment and mixed use um, area. Uh, trucks will access the site from uh, Laurel Street. Um, so leaving the site, um, they'd use Laurel Street head north um, to um, uh, East 38th Avenue, which is actually a public use easement across property, but it's, it's on the same alignment as uh, East 38th Avenue, and it just seemed easier to identify it that way, um, to, Lake Ot to the Lake Otis Parkway. Um, trucks will not drive on residential streets. The official streets and highways plan identifies Laurel Street and East 38th Avenue as um, local roads and the Lake Otis Parkway as a class three major arterial. Uh, pe pedestrians are not expected to be negatively impacted by the truck traffic generated from this project. Uh, the final site uh, grading um, will create two plateaus. The upper plateau will have an elevation of uh, 168 to 178 uh, mean sea level. The lower plateau will have an elevation of 151 to 161 mean sea level. The deepest excavation will uh, be approximately 32 feet with an average depth of 11 feet. Uh, a stormwater um, pollution prevention plan and dust control plan will be provided um, to ADEC uh, for review and approval. Uh, watering trucks will be used to prevent dust from kicking up. Wheel washing, uh, clean rock, or corrugated steel will be uh, located near the entrance exit uh, gate to prevent uh, truck uh, wheel uh, tracking off-site. All overburden uh, and organic material will be used um, during final uh, stabilization and revegetation of the site. Oversized boulders and other objectionable um, uh, materials will be disposed of um, at an approved uh, fill site. Uh, there will be no processing, screening, rock crushing, blasting, any of those types of activities on the site. All disturbed areas will, be re will receive uh, topsoil and or mulch um, and be hydro seeded. The petitioners made a uh, 52 foot deep uh, test of boring near the top of the hill and did not encounter any water. Private development has asked for a condition of approval which uh, would allow them to um, uh, seek uh, more soils um, 
uh, data uh, to better define uh, groundwater hydrology on the site. The petitioner has proposed um, uh, sort of certain um, uh, work hours um, and uh, days of week. Uh, of operation. The planning department um, uh, recommends a different uh, set of uh, work hours. Uh, the department recommends the standard work hours, which is 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. with no work on Sundays and holidays. Um, the project is estimated to, um, by the petitioner to last uh, 90 to 120 days during one construction season. The department's recommend recommended work hours, which are less than what is being asked, will extend the time it takes to complete the project. So the department recommends uh, extending the approval uh, for a second construction season all the way to December 1st, 2012. Um, all extraction operations have to comply with the municipal noise ordinance, regardless of the hours um, that are approved here by the conditional use permit. Um, the driveway um, uh, to and from the site will be uh, will have a locked gate. Uh, the McLaughlin Youth Center is to the north. The Alaska Psychiatric Institute is to the east. These are both secured sites. The petitioner proposes a three-foot-high uh, earthen berm on the west and south boundaries of um, the petition site um, uh, to uh, help prevent uh, casual trespass. Uh, the planning department recommends adding an orange uh, construction fence uh, to discourage this casual uh, trespass. Uh, backhoes and dozers will be used to um, uh, excavate approximately 79,000 cubic yards of material. Uh, trucks will take the material off-site to an approved fill site. Um, uh, the, the, the site, um, the destination of the trucks has not yet been determined. The Lucy Pit and the Sand Lake fill site adjacent to the Sand, uh, to Sand Lake Road in southwest Anchorage um, are possible sites. Um, the TLO is, is hoping to uh, um, uh, obtain approval uh, for the material to, um, the fill material to be deposited in Eagle River at the old Eagle River uh, dump site uh, near Yosemite Drive. Um, there will be no um, drilling, blasting, crushing, screening, processing of the material on site. No off-site material will be brought on site except for possibly topsoil. Yeah. Um, the, um, uh, this site will not be used as a snow dump. Um, the petitioner um, should be required to resolve with PM&E the need to restore Laurel Street to its current condition after completion of the extraction project. It's because there's been some problems with cracking and heaving of Laurel Street. Um, the conditions of approval are um, uh, standard and straightforward. I'll highlight just a couple, um, uh, a few conditions that might be uh, slightly different or unique to this project. Um, there's a condition on page 9. Um, it's uh, condition C. It says resolve with uh, pm &E, the timing of all phases of the operation so as not to conflict with the 40th Avenue uh, road construction project. Uh, e says provide an acceptable uh, uh, drainage plan and erosion sediment control plan, additional soils data uh, to better define groundwater water hydrology, and a plan for treatment of uh, stormwater uh, runoff uh, to be approved by uh, a pm and &E. uh, F says resolve with MLNP and pm and &E. Uh, the use of a temporary construction easement along the south boundary of the property. This is where uh, 40th Avenue will be constructed and, and a little bit beyond that uh, for stabilization of, of uh, that side of the hill. Um, their condition um, I says stake orange construction fence uh, on the south and west uh, lot boundaries to discourage casual trespass. Um, Page 10, uh, condition 7, it begins by saying the approval is valid to December 1st, 2012. I talked about that a little bit earlier um, because we're reducing the hours of operation that, they, that, that the petitioner is seeking. We're saying, well, rather than have them come back a year from now asking for you know, approval, extension, time extension, why not just offer it up now? Um, and then condition 9, resolve with uh, private development the need for road improvements to uh, Laurel Street and as to restore it to the condition that it is now. The department does recommend approval of this conditional use permit for a natural resource extraction subject to conditions 1 through 9 on pages 8, 9, and 10. I'd be happy to answer any uh, questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Isham. <clears throat> is there a reason why they're not selling this stuff to somebody? You know, that's an excellent question. I, I don't know the answer. If you could direct that to the okay. petitioner. Okay, Ms. Pease. 
Mr. – through the Chair, Mr. McLaughlin, what was the date change that you wanted to make to condition number 7? The petitioner asked for approval to – of this conditional use permit from – from now until December 1, 2011. And they intended to complete the whole project next summer, you know, by this time next summer. So the planning department is recommending, you know, giving them one additional year so that they don't have to come back to the commission just to ask for the time extension. Okay. Thanks. You've already made the change. Any further questions? Mr. Weddleton? I'd actually emailed in a question and then I didn't quite – I didn't feel fulfilled by the answer I got. But – and that was about the land clearing ordinance. And I failed to look that up. But my recollection is that we have a land clearing ordinance that says over a certain number of acres you can't mechanically clear land unless you have, I thought, some project lined up to use it. So basically this is some pretty significant land clearing, but I'm not aware that there's, you know, a concrete project to use the land once it's cleared. Can you assure me that that land clearing ordinance doesn't create a stumbling block for this? The way that – that this works is that any time the – any time a property owner wants to clear – is it two acres? I think it's – any time a property owner wants to clear more than two acres of vegetation from their land, then they're required to obtain a land clearing permit from the building safety department. So that is to say that the owner of this property can today or yesterday or last week apply for a land clearing permit to clear the site. And that's – that's just something they're required to do. The commission doesn't have any role in that. What's before the commission right now is a question of whether or not they can mine the site, take fill away. So – so all the land clearing ordinance says is you've got to get a permit to do it. That's right. And – and the permit ensures that project management, engineering, the grading and drainage people, the SWIP people, all the – the water, you know, reviewing folks will – and many more will – you know, all the – all the different municipal agencies will have – and traffic will have an opportunity to review the land clearing permit and make sure that it conforms – it doesn't create a negative impact on the – on the community. All right. Thank you. Mr. Frederick. Thank you. Through the Chair, Mr. McLaughlin, there was discussion a couple of places about the potential conflict between this project on the 40th Avenue project and PM&E's activity there. And on page 15 in the packet, there's a letter from – to you from – from Ms. McAuliffe that intimates that – that there may be a conflict on Laurel Street between the – of the haul routes for the two projects. But yet, I think I saw – I was copied on a question and answer from Ms. Pease to you today that seemed to indicate something different. And so my – my question is, and perhaps she can answer it since she's there, but are – are the – are the two projects going to share the same haul route or are they going to have different routes on – on Laurel Street? Through the Chair, Mr. Frederick, these two projects may occur at the same time. And the petitioner stated that they're seeking every opportunity to gain synergies, maybe using the – the same hauling contractor or, you know, other opportunities to coordinate their activities so that it – all of this work, both the excavation for the 40th Avenue project, which is going to take out approximately 80,000 cubic yards, and this project, which is to remove the hill approximately 80,000 cubic yards, that they occur at the same time in the most efficient way possible. So both, I think, agencies, the – the TLO and Project Management Engineering are going to look to ways to make this efficient and have them happen wherever they can to the benefit of the public. However, they have different set of processes and different responsibilities, and so that's why there's a condition in here that all activities and phases of the TLO's project are approved by PM&E so – so as not to burden or conflict with PM&E's 40th Avenue project. 
uh, and then as far as the hall routes, um, the, the, the 40th Avenue folks, PM&E, um, are seeking to go out uh, 40th Avenue as they build it or head south on Laurel. Uh, they're not seeking to head north on Laurel. Um, this project, uh, the TLO's project, is seeking to head north on Laurel. So um, there may be different haul routes for the, the, two, the two sites. Okay, I guess I had, I had two things in mind. One, I, I think you, you answered is that with sufficient coordination that both projects can can occur simultaneously without without disrupting either one. Is that a fair statement? Um, through the chair, um, Mr. Fredrickson, uh, there's significant amount of overlapping area for the two projects. Um, not only haul route, but right away permit area, traffic control, and actually excavation activities and removal activities in the exact same area. Project Management and Engineering has obtained a, a temporary construction easement license for uh, over one acre of the site that they are also requesting to excavate. We will be using that area uh, for a significant portion of next year that may um, impede some of their activities. We will be putting temporary construction poles um, and a MLMP will be put in temporary construction poles in that area. So there's going to be significant overlap. And so that's why we wrote our um, comments and then requested some recommendations into the packet. So there's a, a lot of things that they want to do, they're not going to be able to do until we're finishing up. But we have been, um, for the last four years, uh, talking to the Trust Land Office about this project and have been coordinating, and so we have ongoing conversations. Um, but it's not a guarantee that they will have the same contractor as us. Okay, so I'm not sure that I'm not sure what that what the answer was. Um, <laughs> the, the, does the fact that the, that you're suggesting that that they be limited in their in their um, days of activity and hours of activity and with, with the with the likelihood that that will extend the project into another season, reduce the the the, uh, the impact of, of any potential conflicts. I suspect it would. Um, the, through the chair, uh, Mr. Frederick, um, there's possibilities for great coordination and efficiency um, with having the two projects happen at the same time, um, and that's why I think maybe the TLO brought this in at the same time to see where the public could be saved money. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the burden of, of this sort of uh, extraction operation by having them uh, simultaneously. So there's possibility for great coordination and benefit to the public, but there's also the possibility that, um, you know, they could be, two projects could be stepping on each other's toes. Um, and so that's why pm &E has asked for this condition on page 9 at the top, um, C, condition C. It says resolve with pm &E the timing of all phases of the operation so as not to conflict with the 40th Avenue road construction project. So that is to say that this condition ensures that pm &E and uh, the uh, traffic engineer will make sure that the two projects, um, uh, it, that PM&E PM &E will have sort of a, uh, the, the opportunity to sort of dictate um, when uh, the TLO um, can and cannot um, uh, have their operations um, so as uh, to benefit, um, you know, the public. Um, we, we don't believe that there's going to be a, a conflict because PM&E will have the opportunity to, to the, the control to say when 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 uh, when the TLO can be working. Now, uh, this is a separate question than the hours of operation and days of the week that uh, that the TLO can work. Uh, that has to do with just sort of commonly, uh, you know, that the. the there's, there's a certain set of um, conditions of approval that have become standard um, uh, commonplace for uh, conditional use permits for natural resource ex extractions. Okay. And uh, one of those is not working on Sunday or holiday and um, uh, only working from 7 in the morning until 6 in the evening. Um, that, that's a separate issue um, uh, than uh, this coordination question um, uh, with uh, with these two different agencies. Okay, I understand that, uh, but it was kind of an abstract question. I guess my other my other concern was in asking the question was, um, you're you're imposing the the uh, a li potential liability on the, on the petitioner. 
Speaker, you're suggesting imposing a, a potential liability on the petitioner and using that um, deficient section of of Wall Street. And um, I, I would assume that if if there was um, use by PM&E's project on that section, that that they would not be faced with the full burden of of any repair. Is that a, a fair statement? Um, through the chair, um, the Office of Private Development, was, which is now um, not located in uh, PM&E, is actually located within uh, uh, Community Planning Department, this reorganization. Right. They, um, uh, their interest is they're saying that um, Laurel Street's still under warranty. They know that there's problems with it. Um, if the trucks from the TLO project um, cause um, you know, the, the road to be deteriorate, then they should be required to uh, return the road at least to the status of when they started. And um, the TLO is, is, is going to be using a different section of Laurel Street than the 40th Avenue project will be. And so I, I can only assume that, that private development is going to um, uh, not overburden the TLO um, uh, for road improvements, but is just seeking to make sure that uh, their issues are protected. Okay, it, it wasn't entirely clear from your explanation earlier that they were going to be to two exclusively different haul routes. Well, it, it appears that, um, well, the, the haul route as shown by the TLO is to head north on Laurel Street right. from their gate, which is located at the north part of their site. And um, my understanding from uh, PM&E is that um, they're going to be using uh, um, uh, Laurel Street heading south. And the 40th Avenue, of course, is south of, of the uh, right. the site or on the southern portion of the site. So they'd, okay. they'd be using different different hall sections. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk to the petitioner about this as well. Thank you. Mr. Weddleton. Well, you know, I had a question on the restrictions on the hours. When, when I look at um, the area and looking at uh, sheet 6 to 6 here, the color, color area photo, there's no residential really in the area. Is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> so what I would think you'd want to do is have um, this work done like crazy on holidays and weekends and late nights because there's no one there to bother who's sleeping and you'd have less impact on the traffic. So it almost looks like the restrictions on the hours goes the wrong way. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for the question. Um, uh, the, the that may be the case. Um, the department um, just wanted to stay with the standard recommendation um, because it's within, um, you know, it's within the city. It's it's not in a rural area. Um, you're correct that it's not a residential um, uh, neighborhood. This is not a residential street. However, um, the uh, facilities to the north and to the uh, east, um, although they are um, institutional. Uh, they are residential-based institutional. That is the, the McLaughlin uh, uh, Youth Center and the Psychiatric Institute. Um, and I don't know that they might um, n uh, not like to have operations happen sort of um, late in the evening. It, it, it's potentially disruptive to them. Uh, but I'd leave that to the, the TLO could speak more to that. Okay, then if I could, one more question. One more. On, on sheet three of six. On this top one, there's there's an area, the or, um, I don't know, diagonal lines that says um, ground prior uh, to 40th Street improvements, and um, so so who pays if you draw a line straight up? Some of that is in the um, land trust area. So is the city clearing away that dirt? Um, I, I'm not sure um, which drawing you're looking at, but I, I think that the question is um, you know, who's extracting. Okay, I'm looking at so, that so too. This area here, or is right. the city paying to clear their dirt? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, through the chair, Mr. Weddleton. Yes, the municipality of Anchorage uh, 40th Avenue project is paying to clear a portion of the hill. On the south side of the hill is the um, Anchorage Community Mental Health Services. They currently have a retaining wall holding back the hill. 40th Avenue is going to be taken out that retaining wall and then we're going to put in a retaining wall on the south side of 40th Avenue to hold back their property. But we have worked with TLO throughout this project and on the north side of the property we are not putting a retaining wall. We are putting a three to one slope. And so we are removing a significant portion of the hill with the 40th Avenue project in order to get an appropriate slope which is three to one 
and stabilize that slope um, and not have any um, problems for the 40th Avenue project. And, and then the rest of it will be taken away by the petitioner, the owner of the property. So we could postpone our road and they could haul our dirt away for us. Uh, do you want to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Ms. Yoshimura. Um, didn't PM&E buy the construction easement on the south side or the, on the south side of this property <coughs> or the north side of 40th Avenue, however you want to describe it? We didn't buy, um, I would guess, I would more classify it as a uh, temporary construction easement and the optimum were there be temporary. We did not pay like full market value, you know, I'm going to just give an example of $20 per square foot. We just rented it. Like How much did you pay for it? I don't know what we paid per square foot, but it's the total value for the um, little over an acre was about $90 thousand dollars just shy of ninety thousand dollars okay. and just to let you know we don't buy property or rent property unless there's a very compelling reason to do that and we had a very compelling reason to buy or to lease an excessive amount of property on this hill and that is because of the temporary relocation of the electrical lines the MLMP distribution lines that are currently in the top of the hill we had to take those out of the top of the hill in order to take down the hill, build a retaining wall, and we needed a very safe area to put those distribution lines, and that'll be on the temporary construction easement area. Thank you. I don't see anyone else in the queue. Um, I just have one question quickly for Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. McLaughlin? I notice for on the this is just a technical issue on the department recommendations there is no number two we go right from one to three um, and so I don't know if something got dropped out or if this is just a misnumbering um, that's just a, um, a typographical error or misnumbering Okay. Uh, if, if I can make a statement on another topic um, I think that the, the last two questions uh, by the Commission had to do with um, you know, is the municipality getting a raw deal by, you know, paying for land and moving um, land um, that uh, to the benefit of the petitioner? Well, the 40th Avenue project um, came first, and and the, the the TLO saw this as an opportunity to piggyback on that and find synergies between the two projects. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, that, I can expand on that. Yes, the 40th Avenue project is in the long range transportation plan, the official streets and highways plan. We officially started planning um, the design phase of this project four years ago. So there was significant amount of work done prior to that as the properties in the area were being replatted where road reserves or um, were being set aside and everything else like that. So we came significantly before their project. And I can answer the question from Mr. Weddleton about the uh, material in the hill. The 40th Avenue project um, did several test borings also on the large hill, and it is not suitable material for um, for selling. It is F3 material, very silty, and so it's um, not a. There's no value in it for structurally. Okay. Thank you. I will go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. The petitioner or its representative has uh, 10 minutes. If you'd like to reserve some time, just let us know how much and we'll reserve it on the clock. And uh, representatives of groups have five minutes and individuals have three minutes. Mr. Spurnak. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, municipal staff, my name is Tim Spurnak. I'm a senior resource manager for the Trust Land Office, and uh, the track uh, C2 is, is my project. We have tonight with us also Marcy Menefee, who's the deputy director of the Trust Land Office, and we have our consultant, Jim Saha, with Lansbury, and he'll be making the presentation tonight. We would like to reserve two minutes for rebuttal time. Thank you. Mr. Sawhill. Madam Chairman, members of the Commission, my name is Jim Sahir, I'm with Lansbury & Associates, and here 
here tonight to assist the Trust Land Office with the approval of this conditional use for a natural resource extraction. Natural resource extraction permits are required for large excavations of over 50,000 cubic yards. This is not a commercial operation. We don't have commercial quality gravel to sell. But because of that large volume of excavation, we do come under the purview of a natural resource extraction permit, have the benefit of a public process and a little thorough review to make sure we have a good project and mitigate impacts on the public. The project location, I think staff did a good job of describing the project and where we are. We are in the UMED district. Last year, the project or this property, the designation was changed to development priority. And we're trying to essentially work with the 40th Avenue project, take advantages of the opportunities that the 40th Avenue project has to prepare this land for development. Land in the UMED district is very rare, very valuable. And we see this as an opportunity to prepare that land in conjunction with a public process and essentially only be a burden on this neighborhood for hopefully a one or two construction seasons and then be done. What we don't want to do is have a public process, public project, have the neighborhood live through that and then follow it up with another project. So we're trying to do the two near to as simultaneously as we can. We're also hoping that although we have to go through a public bid process since TLA is a public agency, to get lucky enough to have the same contractor win our project too. And that would give him the opportunity to do the project, have some savings, and have some coordination. So that's why we have this project for us coming forward at this time. The major issue in this project at this point, as I see it, is the haul route and what we're going to do there. And we have Laurel Street, which is our only public access. As you can see on, I believe it's page 53 or 54 of the packet where we show the haul route. 55. 55. It is our only public road that we front on is Laurel Street. So that's our only way in and out. Unfortunately, Laurel Street's having some performance problems now. The FEFR development group built that project, built that road back in 2006. 2008, it should have come off warranty, but it's having some performance issues. And so the warranty has been extended, and they're working with PM&E to try to get that project accepted. It's our intent not to haul on that road until that process has run its course. It's our understanding that this month Dow Engineers has completed a study. They'll present it to PM&E. Hopefully that will either get them off warranty or find out what the fix needs to be. And we don't want to get in the middle of that. We want the project to be accepted by PM&E to be a perfectly good road that we can run on and not get in the middle of that issue. So it's our intent to wait. It's our hope that either it's accepted or fixed early next spring so we can start on it in the summer. But if we have to wait even until the following year, that's our intention to do that. In the event we are lucky and the current contractor, Cruz Construction is our contractor also, we would have the opportunity for him to go ahead and haul down 40th Avenue once he gets that area ready to go. So there's an opportunity to improve our haul route and just go down straight to 40th Avenue again if that becomes available to us. We have been meeting with the FEFA group to understand their concerns on Laurel Street and to understand their concerns on running on 38th Avenue. And we discovered a few things in meeting with them. And one of those is, again, if you look at page 55 of the packet, to the east of us is two medical office buildings. There's one immediately to the east of us and the other one at Lake Otis and 38th Avenue. And the building on Lake Otis and 38th Avenue is an MRI machine. And there's some concerns within our tenant. Actually, the FEFA group is our tenant. The TLA owns the underlying property. But there could be some impacts to that MRI machine from hauling down that road. We want to make sure we don't cause problems there. We want to work with them on that. But I would point out that when the Lake Otis and Tudor project was done and trucks were running up and down Lake Otis, that didn't seem to cause a problem. So I think hauling with rubber tire trucks, we should be okay. But we do want to make sure we're not causing problems there. So we want to work with them on using 38th Avenue and do that in an appropriate manner. Another issue that came up in coordinating with the FEFA group was their desire for us to work at night. 
um, they believe, since this is not a residential area, um, that there would be some benefit to working at night. Um, it's an interesting idea. It's something we haven't considered, um, but it's something we're open to. Um, but we need to maybe work on the conditions of approval to see if we can leave the door open for that opportunity. Um, with that, as you would expect, Do staff have these, Mr. Sock? Um, no, they do not, but I did leave an extra copy for staff to be provided one. If the okay. secretary could do that, please. Um, yeah, and again, going through the requested modifications I have, um, the first one is to add a condition, which would be 5J, and that condition is to resolve the hall route with PM and E. Um, we have some conditions now to work with pm and &E on our hall route and approval, and one of the things we, we believe may happen as the issues with Laurel Street uh, fall out, as we get our contractor involved, there, there might be some, some minor modifications to our hall route. Currently in our plans using Laurel Street and then 38th. If that doesn't work out and we want to go straight down 40th, we want to have the ability to work the, the details of that hall route with pm and &E and get their approval. I think that provides additional protections for the Laurel Street issue also and, and addresses that concern. The second is a request to modify a condition of approval, and that is to allow us uh, to work to 7 p.m. The current uh, request with staff is to end at 6 p.m. Instead of, instead of being limited to 7 to 6, we'll be 7 to 7. Um, we're trying to just get a full 12-hour shift in. And then the last is, uh, the tougher one is to, to leave the, the door open to work at night. And that's about another condition, 6F. Operation hours for excavation may be allowed at night, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. if approved by the health department and pm and &E. In order to work outside the hours that are normal construction, you need a noise permit from the health department, and they take a pretty hard look at that. And um, this just allows us to have that door open to uh, you know, pursue those permits and try to work with our neighbors um, to reduce impacts. And so those are my comments, my modifications to the permit, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have or commission. And the buzzer didn't even go off, Mr. Sawhill. <laughs> Thank you, Madam uh, Chair. Yes, uh, Ms. Pease, you're first in line. I have four people in the queue. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair, um, if the use of Laurel is delayed while its um, warranty issue is resolved, will your excavation run up against the new timeline of 2012? I do not believe so. Currently, um, the, the, the permits between TLO and uh, PME allow for the, them to use the temporary access or the temporary easement um, until November of 2011. So they should be out of that area by then um, and would allow us to go forward in, in uh, the following year, 2012. All right. Um, second, with regard to your new condition 5J, resolve hall route with pm and &E, would you be willing to state that that would be while using or through using non routes through non-residential areas? Because I'm just looking at the new 40th and Piper and you get into some residential areas if you have to go out that way. That's not our intent. Okay, so non-resident, routes through non-residential areas. I, I would have no problem with that addition. Okay, two more quick ones. Um, regarding working at night, uh, though this is PLI, isn't McLaughlin a de facto residential location? And likewise, I'm not sure what the overnight facilities are at the API, but aren't, aren't people living there? Yes, they are. And, and that is a concern, and that is something we talked to the Pfeffer group about, that that may be an issue that would prevent us from, from doing that. But we told them it's an issue we're willing to consider and we would be willing to work with them on okay. if, if the other permits were, were uh, obtainable. Right. And finally, um, this may be what you're referring to about Laurel Street being under warranty, but 
Mr. McLaughlin had replied to one of my questions that Laurel Street will be closed during some periods of the 40th Avenue extraction and construction. So either to Mr. McLaughlin or to you, um, if Laurel Street's closed, then what are you talking about for taking gravel off your site? Or well, Laurel isn't closed uh, at joining us, but it, it does have warranty problems. And so we can't operate if Laurel is closed. Um, we, we just couldn't operate. We'd have nowhere to go. Um, our, our other option in all of this, Ms. Pease, is to just wait until the 40th Avenue project is done mm -hmm. and then just haul down 40th Avenue straight out to Lake Otis. We would prefer not to do that. I, I think running a bunch of trucks over a brand new road is not a goal. Um, I would just as soon have that work done before that, that happened. But worse comes to worse. That is our, our last option is just to wait until 40th Avenue do is done and then uh, start our project. Okay, thank you. Mr. Isham. In regard to the uh, two <clears throat> haul times that you have under here uh, in your uh, proposed modifications, is that an either or situation? On times would you be working, you know, seven to seven, and then other times working at night, six to six? I would like to see both conditions of approval incorporated, the modification. Um, first of all, if we end up working days, if that ends up to be our hours of operation for this project, we would like to be able to work seven to seven. Um, our other option is to work nights. I don't see us doing both. Um, if we don't go ahead and work nights, we would just do that one 12 hour shift. So you have no objection to us putting or? In or yes, no, no objection. But, but not and. And, no, it's not going to be 24 hours. That wouldn't be fair to okay. anyone. Thank you. Mr. Frederick. Thank you. Through the chair, Mr. Sawhill. I think you may have answered this question in, in your discussion with Ms. Pease, but have you had any, any discussions about hours of operation with either McLaughlin or API? Um, no, we have not. Okay. All right. So that, that re remains to be done. You would certainly do that at some point. Yes, we would. Right. Um, and you may not know the answer to this, but um, Ms. Mackel probably does. In the, in the 40th Avenue project, is a section um, between Laurel Street and, and Lake Otis uh, an, an early phase of that, of that project or a later phase? Uh, they're currently going to start construction on that phase, but um, substantial completion for the entire 40th Avenue project won't be until probably about November 2011. And after that point, TLO um, would have that route available. Okay. So that, that, that was my other question was uh, the 40th Avenue project should be substantially complete next year. Is that right? Yes. Okay. But in addition to... Um, not just the section of road between Lake Otis Parkway and Laurel Street, we're putting a signal in at Lake Otis and 40th. And so oh. that would definitely benefit them as a haul route to have that controlled intersection. Sure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there are going to have to be some, some sort of arrangements made because of the heavy truck traffic, I would think, to control uh, the Laurel-Lake Otis intersection, right? Correct. And it also should be noted, for the 40th Avenue project, there will be um, a significant amount of construction on Laurel Street to tie into 40th. So we do have... Um, the section north of, of the 40th Avenue intersection? Yes. Yeah. It, does, it won't extend to um, their driveway that they're proposing okay. with the gate, right. but we will be having closures of Laurel Street yeah. next year or potentially maybe a little bit this year. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Yoshimura. <laughs> Is your microphone on? <laughs> Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Saw. I did answer a number of questions, but I just have a couple of more. Um, under number 5A, under Department Recommendations, provide your traffic documentation showing that the use of the private drive at East 38th Avenue is being allowed by the owner. Um, which driveway is that, and who is the owner? Um, again, going back to page 55, um, that, which shows the truck route, 38th Avenue from Lake Otis Parkway to Laurel Street mm -hmm. is actually not a street. 
it's a uh, private driveway and there's uh, an easement on the, the southern lot and an easement on the northern lot. Um, the underlying owner of both those lots is the trust land office, um, but we do have a tenant um, on the southern lot that uh, we would need their concurrence from to, to use that, uh, essentially create that, that easement. Is that the Pfeffer group? The Pfeffer group, yes. That's why you're having the dialogue? Well, I think, I think it's always good to talk to your tenants, Ms. Yoshimura, and stay on good terms. <laughs> Okay, so is there any, so 38th Avenue is a private easement? Yes. It's a dri I believe it's a driveway easement is the name of it. Private, private, private driveway private easement. easement. It looks like a public road. It acts like a public road. Everybody drives it like a public road. But technically it's maintained by private people. Was it built to municipal standards or was it built to a driveway standard? It's 30 feet wide with curb and gutter and sidewalk on the south side, but I don't know if it was built structurally to public standards or not. And you're going to put how many trucks on it? A few thousand. If there's any damage to 38th Avenue, like any high road, um, even the Laurel Street, once it's accepted, if we damage it, we got to fix it, and, and we're, we're good with that. So what's the cost of this project? Do you have any idea? Can you give it to me in terms of... Hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars? Um, it's about 80,000 yards of excavation. And I don't have our engineer's estimate with me, but uh, just, just in round numbers, 10 bucks a cubic yard per hour, so 800,000 bucks. So $800,000. And how much do you estimate to be the savings by working in conjunction with PM&E on... 40th Avenue improvements? If we can save $1 per cubic yard by using the same contractor, that's a pretty significant savings. The contractor's there, they're mowed. Um, we're hoping for two to three. The current bid from the low bidder is $7 a cubic yard to haul material off of 40th. So we'd love that price. And where are you hauling to then? If you've already got a bid, then you know where you're hauling? Um, we don't have a bid. We have oh. to put this project out, and we can't bid it until we have this permit okay. um, and this approval. Um, there's two opportunities for disposal. One would be out in Sand Lake at the Lucy Pit, and then there's another opportunity. The Trust Land Office has some property in Eagle River um, that was previously filled. There was a large fill area south of the Eagle River High School. Right. And we're looking to haul the material there because you know, we'll have to come back to you to get a conditional use for that site. That will be in the future. Um, then, and what we would like to do is, is build play fields there to use, the, use this waste material to a benefit for another project um, that could be used for open space for the adjoining property that they own around that old fill site. For um, a mixed-use development, or what are we talking about? The Eagle River site? Yeah. Um, so we're, we are going to be bringing a master plan and rezone to the commission um, in the near future for that property, and it'll be probably residential is what we're looking so, to do. So you are, you, you do have a plan for this fill? Yes. Again, you're probably not going to send it to the Lucy Pit. You're probably no, going uh, to... No, this material has high silt contents, about 30% silt, so it has no commercial value. Um, but we do want to take this waste material and use it to our benefit and create value on that development. All right. So it's not going to the Lucy Pit. It's going to the Yosemite site. If you will give us a authorization in a few months. Right. We better not talk about the Yosemite site. We need to go to the folks. One site at a time. Yeah. Well, I just want petitioners to say clearly and concisely what the intent is. Well, I thought in, it was a bit disingenuous. No, well, it's, their intent is to get a conditional use for this location, <laughs> to remove it, and um, to remove this material. Well, I think we have a right to know where it's going <laughs> <laughs> and how much it costs. <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is they can't dump that much material without coming back to us and getting permission. So we will be seeing where an application for where it's going. Just yes, not does. tonight. Not tonight. Okay. okay. Mr. Weddleton, Mr. McLaughlin first. I'm going to acknowledge you. 
I just wanted to make a comment on uh, Ms. Yoshimura's comment. The, the Trust Land Office actually submitted applications uh, both for um, this conditional use permit uh, for extraction um, and also they submitted a, uh, a concurrent application for, uh, to make the fill site uh, at the Yosemite site. But the planning department um, asked them to hold that um, because um, uh, there really needs to be a master plan for that property. And uh, so that is to say the petitioner sought to give you the full picture of the project all up front, so beginning and end. And it's really the planning department that sort of stood in their way of, of doing that. Um, that's because the special limitations on the property, the Yosemite site, require a master plan. And so they're preparing that now. I really do appreciate that clarification, but I'm sure if I look here on this, it says that it's going either to the Lucy Pit or another site. And there's no intention whatsoever, from what I can tell from your comments or the petitioner's comments, that it's going to the Lucy site. And I, I stand by my comments that that's a bit disingenuous. Thank you. Mr. Weddleton. On your handout with the proposed changes um, to the conditions, so you've got uh, on this condition six allowed um, excavation allowed at night, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Would you want it 7 p.m. to 7 a.m.? I mean, but you're not doing 24 hours, so maybe it doesn't matter. We want to be able to work a 12-hour shift. That, that's our goal. And that's six to six. Okay. Yeah. Either or. All right, it's six. one or the other, not both. They don't want to run 24 hours no. a day. Or. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. I don't see anybody else in the queue, so I guess it's my turn. <laughs> You're not off the hook yet, Mr. Sahel. Um, I have, I'm going to focus at the map on page 55. And I'm going to look, I'm very familiar with the 38th Avenue easement that looks like a street. And as that street uh, intersects with Laurel and you wind around to the south, it, it really skirts the parking lot for that medical building, you know, so it's, mm -hmm. when you come out of that parking lot, you're just right there and in 38th Avenue. They just kind of blend one and one. And then as you go around that curve uh, to the south, there's another medical building that's there, and I think it's some sort of a dialysis center. I, I'm not there. sure exactly what it is, but it's another medical Yeah, uh, it is. Building. It's another a medi medical facility back there. So it, um, is all of your traffic going to be coming out of that 38th Avenue easement? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's our only way out. It's your out. only way out. Yeah. And um, without uh, some sort of traffic control there, how do you imagine the trucks are going to get out of there? I know how it is for cars. And maybe I'm not just not an aggressive enough driver. Uh, the, the trucks coming out of 38th Avenue will be making a right turn. Okay. So I think that'll be relatively easy. Okay. And then on the return trip, um, they'll be making a left turn in. There's a center uh, continuous two-way left turn in there. And uh, yeah, even though it sounds like a lot of traffic, I think there's enough gaps on, on Lake Otis, especially with the signal at Tudor, um, to create those gaps for those trucks to safely turn in. Mm -hmm. And the signal at 36. Right. Mm -hmm. But at certain times of the day, there's a lot of traffic there with the university. Yes, there with, is. With the students and the employees going to the UMED district. Mm -hmm. So During rush hour, like notice, is a busy road. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, it'll, it'll be more difficult during rush hour. But the rest of the day, um, it should function without any difficulty. Okay. But that's something that, you, you know, there'd need to be some management yes, for that. Yes, there would. Okay, I don't have anything further. I'm just very familiar with that whole area. Okay. All right, I will continue. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, be heard on this matter? Anyone? Please come forward and state your name for the record. 
Good evening. My name is Bob O'Neill. I'm with Fairford Development Group, and I represent the building owners to the east of uh, this proposed work. Uh, as well, we are uh, the ones under contract with the city for Royal Street construction um, and, in fact, 38th Avenue construction under a subdivision agreement. Um, in general, we support the project, but we do have a couple concerns which were mostly addressed in the uh, previous presentation. Um, the first being the condition of Laurel Street and the lack of acceptance by the municipality for Laurel Street. Um, in particular, it's that area right in front of the hill that is having some problems. Um, so we concur with their recommendation that um, that be resolved with PM&E before Laurel Street is acceptable for hauling. Um, the second issue or concern that we have is because we operate both of those medical buildings there, and you're correct that the second one is a dialysis clinic. Um, the first one uh, does have an MRI suite in it, which actually faces Laurel Street. So we are pretty concerned about uh, disruption to those facilities, as well as uh, impacting their uh, customers' ability to get in and get out of those parking lots that we actually made the suggestion that a nighttime operation would make more sense in that area. Um, so we'd be extremely supportive of a, a night, nighttime allowance, um, of course, pending health department uh, approval for that. Um, I guess the last point I'd make is 38th was also constructed under a subdivision agreement with the city as part of, part of the Laurel Street construction and that was built to municipal road standards. So I think there was a question about whether that could uh, take truck traffic. Um, that, that road has had no problems whatsoever um, to date, so we wouldn't anticipate that there would be a problem with uh, 38th being used uh, as part of the haul route. But again, we prefer that that be done at night um, to not impact the operation of those two buildings. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Um, Ms. Pease. Through the chair, um, is 40th Avenue operating during the day, though? Then do we face, and maybe the staff needs to weigh in on this, whether we then get into a situation of 24-hour operations? Um, through the chair, yes, 40th Avenue will, is under the same, uh, our contractors under the same requirements uh, from the health department of noise standards and they are operating they do intend to operate through the day you know we are and additionally going to have to do a hauling operation out of the hill and they have to comply with those noise um, requirements and i do you know um api is not here to represent themselves but pm &E did have a meeting with them two weeks ago and they are have significant concerns alone over the noise that's going to be generated during the daytime hours of 40th Avenue. And so they vividly pointed out that they have, it is a residential facility and that they have patients that the noise will um, impact. So um, I'm just put that out there. Thank you. Okay. I don't see anyone else in the queue. I have a, one question for you. Sure. Uh, the facility that's closest to 38th, it, it doesn't it have an orthopedic clinic plus doesn't didn't Providence move their physical therapy and sports medicine clinic to that building? Yeah, that's correct. Providence occupies the majority of the first floor with their physical therapy. They also have a behavioral health uh, component on the second floor. The third floor is orthopedic physicians of Anchorage. Okay. Um, so it's medical offices, but they also have uh, two x-rays on, located on that third floor. So again, potentially susceptible to uh, excessive vibration. Well, no, I'm, I, well, I'm concerned about that, but I'm primarily concerned about people getting out of the parking lot. In and out safely. Yeah, that's correct. There's quite a few people that are physically challenged down to those down. buildings. And the other building is a dialysis clinic, and that has the same issue. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming forward this you evening. Bet. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to testify? Anyone at all? 
Um, I, no, there's no one else. Mr. Sahil, you have two minutes left. Um, I'll go ahead and wave our rebuttal. You'll wave your rebuttal? Does Mr. Spernak want to use the two minutes? Okay. No. Okay. Mr. Weddleton. Well, um, I have a question for Mr. Sawhill. You're not off the hook quite yet. You know, it, it looks like the easiest thing to do is get 40th Avenue, the West End, done, and everybody hauls their stuff out of there. And then you keep finishing 40th, 40th Avenue to the east, and you guys haul out. Is, I mean, is it hard to, can that not happen? to schedule 40th Avenue's project a little differently? That's one of the outcomes that we're hoping for, is to go ahead and have the same contractor and go ahead and haul out 40th Avenue when the rest of the material is going. Um, you know, that that's what we're hoping will happen. So they're going to shoot down 40th, 40th Avenue straight to Lake Otis, the, the 40th Avenue people. That's my understanding that one of the things that the contractor wants to do is go ahead and muck out that section that's deep peat and go ahead and fill it and, and use that as his primary haul out as he's coming out. Um, to so if that's the case, then a lot of the noise problems and doing it at night go away. One of our issues is we, the, the trust land office is a state agency and they have procurement regulations. Any other private person would just go and negotiate with the current contractor, but their hands are tied. They have to go through a, a formal bid process. And, and our challenge is to craft that bid in an effort to try to take advantage of this opportunity, um, but still have it wide enough that other contractors could bid it. And for other contractors to bid it, we have to give them a viable haul route um, to, to bid from. Um, Again, in the event we can't, we also have to craft our bid such that if Laura doesn't get resolved soon um, and everything has to wait, that those bids would still be good long enough for 40th Avenue to get done and then just go out 40th. So, so we have our, some of the challenges in crafting this and dealing with being a public agency and, and going through that, that bid process. But... We would like this to be done and use the same contractor and have life as good. But if we have to, we can be patient and wait and reduce the impacts. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I have some more folks in the queue, Mr. Sawhill. <laughs> Ms. Pease. This might be for staff or Mr. Sawhill. I'm just I'm a little perplexed right now how we give your either or hours of operation, knowing that there's another operation going on and possibly ending up with the worst situation, which would be 24-hour truck traffic and noise for the API and the, the two clinics. That is a tough one. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of things that are, I guess, uh, mitigation circumstances is I, I'm concerned about McLaughlin and API and how that'll play out and whether that's even viable at all. Um, you know, we did have a meeting with you know the the property owners to the east, our tenants, and and they suggested that as is a, a an opportunity. I'm not sure it'll end up playing out. Um, but but the other issue is we do have a condition of approval that we have to coordinate with PM and E and get their sign off on anything to make sure we don't have disruptions to their project. Um, and, and that coordination um, provides some benefit to the commission um, that, that that will um, work out well. Through the um, chair, if I may, with staff, can we have a condition that, that binds PME, PM and E to ensure that there's not 24-hour, the effect of scheduling doesn't become 24-hour truck and hauling and excavation activity? Uh, no, um, I, I don't believe that the uh, the commission would want to um, uh, tie down uh, PM&E's operations. Um, I also point out that, well, this this condition, of, this proposed condition of approval is really a surprise to the department. This is just laid on the table for us, you know, in the last half hour. Um, so, I, I, you know, the staff cannot, 
you know, give you a, a recommendation for or against it. This was not part of the original submittal. Um, what we can say is that it's difficult, it's, it's very hard to obtain um, a noise permit. So the Department of Health and Human Services does a very good job of um, reviewing projects like this, issuing noise permits, um, uh, protecting the public interest. So they would be under very strict um, guidelines. Uh, the TLO would be, uh, uh, would have to uh, prove that it was, it was safe for the surrounding neighborhood uh, if they wanted to work at night. Uh, but, um, you know, API is there, um, uh, McLaughlin Center is there, the Horizon um, Nursing Home, Providence uh, Nursing Home is in the vicinity. Um, it's, it's a good ways away, but it's in the vicinity. Um, so uh, working all night, um, it's, that's a, I think that we should be cautioned uh, for that. But that's the best I can say at this point. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Parks. It, it sounds like to me that you put this project together because of the 40th Street uh, extension. Is that is that a correct analysis? Yes, it is. Okay. And and do you have a plan for the property in the near future, or are you just developing it now so that you can do something in the future? Um, we are preparing it. We don't have a, a specific project uh, in mind or in even in the planning process. We just saw this as an opportunity. It's a it's a large hit. It, it's very high. Um, and what we envision there is some kind of medical office building, a commercial building, and commercial sites want to be flat and rectangular. And so we're just trying to you know, create that shape um, to create interest and, and create income for the trust. So, so it's an economic issue. That's the major reason for doing it now. Yes. No. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Weddleton. Is the main noise issue the trucks hauling, or is it loading the trucks? Um, the main noise issue for working at night is backup alarms. They tr that noise travels tremendous distances. Yes. Yeah. We've dealt with that before, where we said there's, there were alternatives, like maybe you do a loop or anything. Yeah, the, 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 you know, typically the trucks we can run in a loop. And those are the ones that are the primary problems with backup alarms. But then we're going to have, we'll have an excavator, we'll have a loader, um, and then we'll be running trucks. It's a pretty minimal operation. You know, we're not doing compaction. Um, we're not doing those kind of typical construction things. It's, it's a relatively simple operation. But, but the noise of loading into the truck, that's a huge amount of noise. And the mm -hmm. truck pulls away, it's more of a traffic. Right. Aggravation, but not a noise. When we are when we are working the project, we're going to be working from Laurel Street in. So we're going to start down, and we're going to start digging into the hill. So the hill will actually provide some kind of a, a, a barrier to the sun traveling to McLaughlin and the API, but there will be noise. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't see anyone else in the queue, so you finally you, can sit down. And there's no one else uh, that wishes to testify, so I'll close the hearing and the matter rests with the commission. Um, Mr. Isham. Madam Chair, move for approval of case number 2002 uh, conditional use permit for natural resource extraction track C2 Providence Chester Creek subdivision. Subject to page 8. The uh, department recommendations on page 8, 9, and 10, which are renumbered as a start, so the numbers match up. And with some added conditions uh, provided by Lonsbury and Associates. And I'm going to give the, uh, the new numbering system as I add those. Uh, so... I want to add a 4J, which is resolved Hall Road, Hall Route with PM and E. And a. Well, there is no two, so we're moving everything up. Yeah. Three becomes two, four becomes three. So uh, it's actually formerly five, it's now a 4J, so that's in a new paragraph. And um, under paragraph six, which now is five, 
I want it to read as follows. Our operational hours for excavation shall be limited to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. if approved by the Department of Health and Human Services and PM&E, comma, Monday through Saturday, with no operations on Sundays or holidays. The operation of the site shall include, and it lists all those A through A through E. And I'm open to friendly or unfriendly amendments. Okay, and that was seconded by Miss Dean. Okay, and. Uh, Mr. Weddleton. I'd like to modify uh, condition eight and just add some wording that's in the pa um, this um, packet on page 22. So add to the end of newly numbered condition eight to at least the condition existing at the start of the hauling operations, period. This may include reconstruction of road sub-base and repaving. Could you repeat that for me? Sure. Uh, just add to the end of that condition, to at least the condition existing at the start of the hauling operations, period. This may include reconstruction of road sub-base and repaving. And, and this just takes wording that's on page 22. Okay. Okay, and do you accept that, Mr. Isham? Yes. Okay. Did you get that, Madam Secretary? Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Frederick. Um, just thinking about Mr. Isham's um, addition of the, of the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., since we're, since we're kind of splitting days here, if you, if you read that literally, the, then they would only be able to haul from 6 p.m. Monday to 6 a.m. Saturday. I mean, they kind of lose a lose a shift, right? No. No? Tell me how I'm wrong. Right. No, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> you're right. So, uh, how do we resolve that without getting too much into? Sausage making here. So because of our, because of the wording on, on Sundays, that's what kills that that sh that one shift. Then, well, they either start at 6 p.m. Sunday, or they or they or they or they end at 6 a.m. on Sunday. Yeah. <clears throat> They'd probably end at 6 a.m. on Sunday. Well, so we just say six, six consecutive, six, well. Just state it. <laughs> just state. Six. Okay, okay. Beginning at, beginning at 6 p.m. on Monday and ending at 6 a.m. On, on Sunday. And there's a 36-hour break. Yeah. Six p.m. Mr. Eichnum and Miss Dean, does... That. Okay, so basically, that would then read, or at night, or uh, be allowed 6 p.m. Monday to 6 a.m. Sunday. Does that solve it? That sounds like mm -hmm. 24-hour day operation. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we need to word it somehow so that it so that it's clear that it's. 12-hour shifts. Yeah, 12-hour shifts, yeah. right. For six, so that there's yeah. six days of work. Right. Six 12-hour shifts right. per week. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, well. Then, Chad, I might have remembered from the packet, though, that the noise criteria by ordinance prohibit 
or restrict operation. Maybe Mr. McLaughlin can chime in here. In the, in the packet, isn't there a reference to a municipal noise ordinance that says no Sundays and holidays? And aren't we kind of um, running up against that? We don't think we can override it, is what I'm uh, saying. Uh, thank you for pointing that out, Ms. Pease. Um, on your, uh, your uh, late comments laid on the table um, from Janine Nessheim, the Department and uh, Health and Human Services, if you read Condition 3A, um, it would make it very difficult for um, Sunday operations um, to occur. Then I'd like to ask the question how all the road projects work 24-7 or work at night on the weekends. Um, I can answer that. We that would be appreciated. The road projects um, do, you know, have weekend closures, especially at major intersections. We have to get noise permits. We have to get special permission. Well, maybe this type of a situation can too. Generally, we're closing um, major intersections that are a little bit further away from residential or noise sensitive areas, example like API. So. Well, since the proposed uh, condition of approval is provides for 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. Monday to 6 a.m. Sunday, it's it, it's an, an an alternative, and they're going to need to get a noise permit regardless from the Department of Health. And so I don't know that we need to work out all the details here. Well, I, yeah, I think the way to... I believe the, the correct way to resolve this is uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sunday. Correct me if I'm wrong, no, Monday. No, let's see, 6 p.m. We're making them take their weekend on Monday, I mean, if we set it up this way, if we if they start at 6 p.m. on Monday night, yeah, and I don't think we want to do that. 6 p.m. Sunday night. 6 p.m. Sunday, Sunday night, night. right? So, so it would be Sunday, Sunday, night, so Sunday through Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So it's subject to yeah. Subject to the yeah. So, so it would be Sunday through Saturday. Subject to the permit. Okay. And they're gonna have to get a permit from. So. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on. Yeah, okay. Okay, now I'm going to restate this thing. So okay. Operational hours for excavation shall be limited to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. This doesn't didn't work out right. Sunday through Saturday, if approved by the Department of Health and Human Services and PME. But, uh, uh, with no operations on Sundays or holidays, it, it, that doesn't that isn't right. Okay, help me, guys. <laughs> okay, we're just going to stand at ease a minute, and we're going to get this worked out. I want to just say with no operations on holidays, you've already restricted the hours on Sundays. No, I guess it's just... Okay, 36 hours. Okay, let's do this. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so if they start on Sunday at... They'll go 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. This is a shift. 6 to 6. 6 to 6. 6 to 6. 6. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. 6 to 6. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's right. And that's how it turns out. Okay. 
and, and they, they quit they quit working at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, right? And, Yeah. Actually, actually, it's Sunday through Saturday. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, or you can do Monday through Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's actually, it's Sunday night is when they start. Okay. Sunday night to Monday, Monday night to Tuesday, Tuesday night to Wednesday, Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday night to Friday, Friday night to Saturday morning, and Saturday morning is the day. They're done. 24 hours work, and then they pick up again Sunday night. And they okay. give them six shifts. One, two, right. three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay. You got it all figured out. <laughs> all right. Now. All right. Let's try this. Let's try this again. <laughs> Get this wording right so we don't have some unintended consequences. Okay. Operational hours for evacuation or excavation should be limited to 7 a.m. to 6, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sunday through Saturday, with no operations on holidays. The operation of the site shall include the following. And if approved. You want to add that? Yeah, well, yeah, and, and, and that stuff in there, if approved by the Department of Health and Human Services, that follows uh, after the Sunday through Saturday. Miss Dean, are you still tracking? I think this last round I just kind of lost it a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay. But do you, are you still supportive of it? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Mr. Frederick, you've been waiting patiently. No, I'm not waiting. Any. You were in the queue. I'm perfectly happy. Okay. Miss P. Miss P. Are we speaking to the findings? I don't think Mr. Isham has, but I was. No, I, I have not. I, I'm, I'm just trying to get the wording right. I'll speak after you speak. Then you may speak, Mr. Isham. Okay. Um, I, I, obviously, I'll, I'll be uh, supporting this. Uh, it, it, uh, it, I think there's going to be a certain amount of synergy. Uh, by piggybacking onto the work that's going to be done on 40th Street. Uh, and uh, I believe we've, uh, our biggest concern has been the, the noise that's going to be created by the loading and the hauling and things of that nature. And uh, Department of Health and Human Services and PME will uh, enforce what the uh, what the requirements are, uh, so I believe that uh, we'll, we'll have, I'm not going to say there's going to be minimal impact, but there's going to be a, an impact that's the, the best as can be expected under the circumstances with both the road work and uh, this going on somewhat simultaneously. So uh, I will be uh, will be supporting it. Ms. Pease, you can come up with some findings maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Pease. Yes. Um, the project was outlined. Um, does does um, will in at its conclusion contribute to the existing and planned land uses in the surrounding neighborhood and does meet the intent of its use district? The actual conditional use operation, the extraction of gravel, um, does raise some concerns which we've attempted to meet. In particular, under 2150.020 D1, the standard regarding impacts of pedestrian and vehicle traffic circulation and safety, um, we have left the ability here in resolving the truck haul route to possibly use 40th Avenue's western end out to um, Lake Otis. We've also heard that um, there are, that application or the conditions say that there will be no truck traffic through residential neighborhoods, so we've attempted to provide some protection there. Um, with regard to D3, forms of environmental pollution, noise and vibrations are um, 
a key consideration. We do have the standard procedures of truck washing and or steel grading on the road to reduce gravel and dust and that sort of thing. But with regard to noise and vibrations, those are major concerns for the surrounding uses. And we have provided the opportunity for nighttime operations, which will alleviate the impacts for two nearby clinics, but will have to be weighed against the potential impacts to residents of the area, especially to McLaughlin Juvenile Facility and to Alaska Psychiatric Institute. And we're entrusting the review process of the municipal agencies, um, particularly DHHS, to um, take very seriously those concerns um, because those residents don't have the freedom to change their schedules. And in addition, there are surrounding um, roads which do pass by residential areas on Lake Otis, for example. So we have uh, recognized that this um, uh, the noise is a very urban area, and um, we've tried to provide some choices to minimize the noise and vibration impacts on nearby uses. Okay, Mr. Weddleton. Oh, I'd actually just like to add to that that the benefit, the possible benefit of nighttime operations would be to help with the traffic flow, you know, through the neighborhood and onto Lake Otis. Mm -hmm. Any further comments from commissioners? Okay. Uh, I will be supporting uh, the application. I, um, I am sensitive to, to the different uses in the surrounding area, and uh, I think that this property is, uh, has some tough challenges. This hill has been there and been known about for a long time, and the Mental Health Trust has a responsibility to uh, develop the land for the beneficiaries of the trust or to prepare it for development. And uh, this is the, the step they've chosen at this point in time. Um, my biggest concern is with the access uh, out onto Lake Otis at uh, 38th. Um, I, my hope is that whoever the successful contractor is for this project will be given, will give its drivers um, adequate instruction about uh, safety and and how to travel safely through that neighborhood. It's not your traditional or normal industrial area and remind them, uh, you know, about all the different users in the area. There's going to be a lot of residential traffic on Lake Otis because there are many streets that use Lake Otis as a residential collector. To the west, there are residential subdivisions that dump into Lake Otis, so there are potentials for conflicts there as well as a lot of walking students, students that walk to the university or bike. Um, there's a lot of the elderly population that walk along Lake Otis too, um, as well as the point that was raised about concerns about medical equipment in some of the medical facilities. That's a, a particular challenge for you because vibration may uh, be harmful to uh, some of that equipment. But all things considered, uh, I will support it. And I'm generally supportive of the nighttime hours um, as long as steps can be taken to minimize the impacts on the residents in the area, particularly the folks that are in API or the young people at McLaughlin News Center. Uh, because I think that would eliminate a lot of the uh, traffic conflicts and you'd probably have um, be able to do a much more efficient hauling job. I sense we're ready to vote. Is there any objection to the motion? 
Hearing none, that is approved. Okay, we have one more thing left before us that we move to the end of the agenda, and that is the resolution that Ms. Fees and Mr. Weddleton re were reviewing. No one's here. It was. I will tell you, Madam Secretary. Well, what is it? I believe it was. It was F, I think. Wasn't e. it? No. E. D one E. D. D one. D one E. Oh, wait. Yeah, D one D. Two. Two thousand ten thirty two. The snow disposal site. This one. Yeah. Madam Chair? Yes. Are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. I did find a couple of changes to um, bring the resolution to make it match the, the minutes. Um, on page two of the resolution, condition five, it talks about. Is that a motion, Ms. P? Yeah, yes. I, I motion to make. Um, several amendments to the resolution, draft resolution put before us to bring it into conformance with the draft notes. On page two of the resolution under number five, there's a reference to the pedestrian safety, the, the ped, pedestrian amenities that will be occurring on Spruce Street. So, but it's important to add, as stated in the minutes, that these are future. Um, benefits. So I would say on the second sentence, after the words the Spruce Street Project Proposal, I put a comma, upon projected completion in 2016, comma, add those words, and then continue with the sentence, intends to provide continuous pedestrian paths on both sides of the street, and then put a comma instead of a period and insert which will alleviate pedestrian safety concerns. And that was a finding made on page 17 of the minutes by me. Then there's another proposed finding also taken from page 17 of the minutes, which I'll paraphrase it first. The second, the last part of that paragraph that starts Commissioner P's, um, it talks about how we address the concerns about water pollution to the preserved wetlands. And so this would be a new numbered finding, and I propose it to read. Um, the concerns expressed over potential impacts to the Class A wetlands, which bear a conservation easement, will be met through the monitoring plan and detention system that will be approved and overseen by Corps of Engineers, Watershed Management Service, and AWWU. Item four. Was that 12, finding 12? It could be 12, or it could be put in after number two, which talks about water quality. Okay. And then the final proposed correction is on the resolution number, um, finding number eight. It now reads that the commission added several conditions of approval, and it lists noise during peak hours. That's correct. Hours and days of operation. That's correct. I would insert height of snow storage, and then I would delete litter control and off-site drainage impacts. The reason being that while we discussed them, I didn't find that we came up with any new conditions to address them. We just validated the proposed conditions. And that's, those are the changes I came up with. 
to match <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Anything further, Mr. Weddleton? Um, well, I, I had a couple more findings that were in here. And just reading straight out of the minutes, or, or almost. Um, one was from Commissioner Dean stating that Anchorage is out of places to put snow, and this is a very good, this is a good place to put it. Are you, you need to make, uh, um, 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 uh, offer an amendment. Offer an amendment, friendly amendment, to add a finding to someone. Oh, yes, I would um, accept that, and it might go in number three, which says that previously identified sites have been lost to development. Or just add it onto there? Yeah. Okay. If you want to enhance that. That would be good. Uh-huh. I don't. She, 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 yes. She, yeah, she doesn't have to if she doesn't object as long as it's in our minutes. And then I, I had made a um, finding that it met some regulations that aren't referred to. No, I guess one is, and maybe staff could confirm that I have the right number or had it. Um, the conditions the commission has imposed, uh, I'm sorry, start with the snow site conforms to the standards of municipal code 21.35.020 and 21.50.270. Which is already the, um, finding 10 mentions other parts of code, but not that 21.35. 35.020. You're right. So I would just add that to condition 10 or finding 10. Yes, good catch. Yes. Yeah. And that would do it, and I'll support the motion. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, that is approved. Well, according to my agenda, we have come to the end of it. Move to adjourn. No. No. Or we Mr. have a and a question. Um, I understand. I'm well. I'm curious as to what is the status of the Title 21 rewrite. I understand that Mr. Coffey has been retained by the municipality of Anchorage to work on this project, but I'm wondering if there are any matters that are still going to come before this commission or if our work is over. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin. Um, uh, through the Chair, Ms. Uh, Yoshimura, I'd be happy to um, ask Ms. Wong um, to uh, send you an email tomorrow morning or send the commission an email tomorrow morning with an update. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. All right. Thank you. Does anybody want these um, capital improvement budget binders? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd be happy to collect them. Okay. If you just leave them at your uh, tables, I'll yeah, well, swing by and pick them great. up. Great. Thank you. I'm sure somebody can use them. Not me. Okay. Are there any further comments? <clears throat> If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Saying I see Ms. Dean and Mr. Isham. Is there any objection? Hearing none. <laughs>